oh. ng pinakamalalakas oh. na Mobile Legends Bang Bang players sa buong mundo. I'm Mara Aquino. And my name is Hans Galeria. And this is... MPL Philippines, Philippines Season 13. 13. After four teams secure playoff spots last night, Hans, gaano ko ba kahalaga ang remaining <laughs> matches natin? Well, for starters, apat na teams pa ang maglalaban-laban para sa natitirang dalawang playoff slots. And as for our four other qualified teams, kitgita naman yan para sa playoff seedings. That's right. Kasi kung babalikan natin, gauntlet format na ang ating playoffs. This means na mas rewarding na ang final seeding na makukuha ng ating teams after the regular season. Mismo. Kaya para sa lahat ng ating MPL fans, asahan yung mas mainit low, 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 pa sa low, panahon low, low, ngayon low. at ang masasaksihan nyo simula as of this moment. Speaking of, what matches do we have in store for today? Echo versus RSG. Araw, ang star match of the day sa pagitan ng Echo at RSG Philippines. After that, we'll take a look at what Blacklist International and TNC Pro Team should do as they meet Thanks each God. other new. Finally, for the last match of the week, we have Spider Miles and Minana Evos going to the MPL Philippines and World Champions, AP Bread. This is Echo versus RSG Philippines. Casters, Faso. Good warm afternoon to everyone out there. Welcome to the English desk here. What is up, guys? I'm Naisu, and this is now the Tito desk. I'm here with Rockhart Wolf. Gentlemen, how are we feeling? I am feeling very happy today because you didn't get the memo again. Oh, wait. I just, <laughs> oh, yeah. I just realized this. You just realized that. Oh, man. You guys are okay. Well, feeling young as ever, um, gentlemen. You know, we are. Uh, Pasapina! And stocks yeah. and uh, mortgages. Yep. <laughs> the harsh reality of life. But I think now's the time to forget all that because I believe we'll have a great first series. Let's throw that all the window for Let's now. Wolf and uh, not for the audience out there with the of talkings of the older, <laughs> older men here, right? But let's talk about the lineup here. The headline, sorry, the kiss. This is Carl Teasy and Demon Kai, gentlemen. And we know there's a lot of heat for this. Let's go. We've been looking forward to this One matchup track. between the two. Get they bring out the best in each other. Is what we've bring out the there it is. Best in me. I love it. I love it. Yeah, no I love it. We got Team Kai. He and Carl Tizzi have said a lot <laughs> about, you know, how they feel about each other in the jungle. Yes. And there's been a lot of heated words leading up to this. Yeah. 12 years and uh, Naisu still hasn't got the karaoke. Oh, but like the stream, guys. Yeah, we'll, get yeah, there. we'll get there. We'll get nope. there. We'll get there. Libre, yeah. <laughs> Libre. But yeah, um, I really like that kind of headline because uh, it's true that Demon Kite, um, as well as Carl Tisi, they have been battling against each other on and off the Mobile Legends court. And um, guys, next that week, we sure ball na na. Reminded of is that there was a time where Starlight, Tatlo Starlight, really, tayo next week. Uh, feisty um, <laughs> statements about Demon Kite, but then when they battle up against each other, they bring out the best in each other. Let's actually watch this clip here on what Demon Kite has to say about it. Next week, Bali yano sa sabay natin sa MPL. Kite, from all of the junglers in the world, give me five. Na gusto mo at paborito mo talaga ng nakatapat sa jungle. Uh, number one kasi Carl TZ. Carl TZ. Okay, number one. Bakit si Carl? Ano, kasi kapag nakakalabang si Carl, para ano, palagi na yung ako. best namin. Kung baga, kung ano yung pinaka-full potential namin pag nagkakalabang. Fullest potential. Oh, the goat yun eh. Yeah, number one on the list. <laughs> Carl TZ. And I, I actually completely understand because both of these players have had their ups and downs. But either, either way, they have proven themselves to really bring out the best in each other. And stats will show that. <laughs> the stats will definitely show it. Love it. I always, have, I always have to take a moment to yeah. look at the graphics because they're amazing. Yeah, now, take us through the stats here, Wolf. I know you love to, yeah. to break this down. Yeah, Demon Kite uh, surprisingly had the better KDA um, during MPL Play Season 13. And then when they faced up against each other, it's also true. Well, for Carl TZ, he really uh, took a really massive step back after he's, you know, we know him as the Lancelot god here in the Philippines and in the world, right? But then when the utility junglers came in, when M4 came in, he really took a massive step back and just focused on supplementing the other stuff, like damage. Per minute, for example, he trumps Demon Kite. That means that he's constantly in there. It's just that when it comes to actual kills and assists, he does not get it. And then when you're looking at their uh, kill participation, their average third kill as well as Lord Control, it's almost uh, almost the same. I would not dip 
de depend on the stats like Lord Control as well as Average Terror Kill when uh, comparing Carl TZ as well as Demon God because I think that they both really flourish in those kind of situations. It's just that RSG is in a good trajectory, like in a in a good streak when yeah. it comes to like their stats. So that's why the stats are skewed towards Demon Kite. But yeah, this will be a legendary battle. Yeah, yeah. And the big part of that also is obviously Carl TZ has less oh, playtime yeah. because they had to swap out exactly. Outplayed and Zyda. That's yeah, that's true. true. And lately, we've actually seen them stick with the lineup, at least for the couple few matches now. But we also have to make a point so everybody knows that both Echo and RSG have secured, yeah. of course, their playoff spots. What they're fighting for, of course, still is that upper bracket slot. And as you take a look at the, you know, their first meeting here, of course, it was a great series. But I will say here, over the course of this regular season, now that we're nearing, of course, down to the almost the last couple weeks here, man, have the teams really developed. And that's yeah. something we talked about even no, in no, the no, no. matches, you know, in the early weeks where it was like, no, you no. have this certain expectation, even for Echo. A lot of people. You okay, know, okay, not even Echo, not not like, even where are they going to sit? Let's go! We saw some of the changes, like Rockhart mentioned, that they did without played in Zyda. But now things are kind of getting a little heated, a little serious, right? Because still, again, that upper bracket slot is definitely something that these teams want to be fighting for, even though they've already secured their slot. Asana, asana. Now, of course, asana, before we talk more about the matchup, everybody right now, we have something special for you for the star match. What do they have, Rockhart? Yeah, basically, you just want to guess or predict who you think is going to come out on top here. Do you think hashtag Echo is going to win or hashtag RSG is going to win? Comment it right there and add your game and server ID. And we'll pick four winners. Yeah, four winners, four winners. of 1,000 diamonds <laughs> each. That's right. So, Predicting. good luck to everybody out there. Let's go ahead and welcome out our marshals here to do an amazing job. The fairness and the integrity of the game, of course. We've got our boys that have been doing the work throughout the week. It's Jeff, Chico, Patrick, Wilbur. Yo, Chico, you know what? He played with JP back Ooh. in NPL Philippines in the earlier days, you know? Wow. So that's this is going to be something. Yep. Uh, <laughs> It's weird that I think um, there should be a time where we should be talking to Chico more. You know? Four in JP, oh. Hey, pa, Launching into the marquee match of the day, the star match. The Orcas aim to secure their path to the upper bracket and make a statement. Locked in a tight race with the Raiders, can the Express deliver a decisive win? Give it up for Echo! Raiders, also in contention for a coveted upper bracket position. They're eager to demonstrate their prowess once more. Having recently ended a winning streak, can they now derail the Express and halt their advance? It's RSG Philippines! Coaches, Coach Tic Tac and Coach Panda. NBL Arena, it's the star match of the day. Will it be Echo or RSG? And let's take a look at the lineups here for Echo. Familiar faces here, Rockheart. 
Yes, exactly. And we will be seeing JP today. Like we mentioned, uh, I feel like the the focus right now on Carl TZ and Demon Kite should be very interesting because these tank jungle heroes that Carl TZ has been fielding, they're starting to really catch up. I feel like he's been starting to pick up steam since we start since the whole season yep. began. So Definitely. it'll be interesting how that matches up to Demon Kite by now, their second meeting. And take us through here, across from them, it's going to be RSG Philippines. This lineup has been doing some work here, Wolf. Yeah, you know, as much as uh, Mr. Leo is a fan of uh, the Hitman, I am starting to be a big fan of Nats now. <laughs> Nats. Nat He's so good at the game, and to say you guys that quite light as well, they kind of bounce off of each other's momentum. And That's really you can feel that, especially like who say, um, now you, you will really forget how he played from previous seasons in the different regions because the way that he plays right now for RSG is totally different. He's more composed, yeah. he's more on point, I would say. And how about that KDA for Kuse? 6.07. Last the Here's the thing, man. As a viewer for the past couple of days, I have been just watching. Uh, of course, the match was able to do with yeah. the Arbor, Baga, you know, yeah, even, even, Whether it was the English stream or whether it was the Tagalog stream, the sentiment was shared. Yeah. How is this guy still getting the R lot? I How know. is that still <laughs> going through? Exactly. So maybe that changes here. You know, yeah. let's take a look also at the diagrams. How mm -hmm. this kind of breaks down here, Wolf. Okay. So first blood ratio. Interestingly, the, the same for both teams. Kill participation almost the same. So negligible three percent. And also the other stats like Lord Control ratio as well as Tower Secured. So you can really say that both of these teams are equal and equally matched when it comes to how they approach the match. And we know for sure that Echo has always been that team with the Echo Express mentality. Now for RSG, you can really feel that too. That their aggression is uh, really felt in their games. Of all the matchups we've had for the whole season, yeah. I feel like Echo and RSG feel like they're the most matched, especially uh, around the jungle side and I would say the roamer side as well. Yeah. Because, yeah. um, you know, like the one, there are few, few remaining Cho players of the game, yeah. Yeah. but we keep we kind of forget JB also plays that Cho. Uh, we already imported one of our strongest Cho players, yeah. Yaoi. <laughs> so I, I, I'm always watching out for these guys on how they are going to control that mid area. Yeah, you always want to take a look at that, but also we have to take a look at the Infinix keys to victory here on this matchup. Wolf, take us through it. Yep, you have to respect Snats playmaking heroes. We already talked about this, <laughs> interestingly. And that's definitely uh, keys uh, to victory. And I would say that should be for Echo. I think this is a, this is swapped. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is swapped. And Echo needs to ban Arlo. That, that's the, that's my keys to victory here for Echo. That's all I want to say. And now for um, RS, you have to watch out for Sanford's versatile playstyle. So expect the XP laner heroes to be picked last. And I, I, I think that's my bold prediction between the two teams. If they get Ruby or Arlo, that they're quite flex, but I think that they will deprioritize their EXP laners just so that they can win when it comes to the lane, ma lane to lane matchup. Lastly, eyes on the opposing roamers initiations. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I think um, JP has been known to be criticized in the past, mm -hmm. but I think his, uh, his, you know, him being a veteran will eventually kick off, and I think it will be uh, it will be triggered this time, especially because he's playing up against Light. A that's very true. good roamer. And it feels like yeah. you're, you have no choice. If you're faced off against a very strong opponent, you have no choice but to really step your game up. Yep. And that's one of the reasons why, you know what, these guys bring out the best in each other, not just in jungle, each and every roam. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. I, I completely agree with what you said too, Rock Hard, where this is, these two teams, it feels like it's one of the most even matched yeah. uh, kind of matches that we can yeah. have, of course, here. So, Alko, we want to invite you guys, everybody watching once again, we had the YouTube one earlier. Now it's time for TikTok. You guys have some goodie bags for you. That's right. Go to TikTok and go to MPL Philippines TikTok channel at MPLPH underscore official. Click on the official live stream right there on your screens where you'll see our faces. And then once you're in the stream, click on the top left corner of your screen to join the goodie bag lottery. Make sure to click that or press that before the base blows up. Yeah, and not to mention again, again guys, as we get jumped into the draft here for game number one, you guys watching on YouTube, here. make sure to join the giveaway as well. A thousand diamonds for four winners over there. Yes, yeah. on the English stream. So now we can talk about this. 58%. This is win rate for blue side for Echo. RSG, pretty good win rate for the red side. They like to get those two picks picked up. So we're almost through this first phase of the bands. I like the respect. Arlot is banned out. Mm -hmm. 
Good choice for Echo to oh. start there. The Louis Yi has been causing some havoc as well oh, across sure. the team. So just that's taken say, out. I just want to say there <laughs> YouTube comments are agreeing. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to the shadow. JP's the goat. Let's go. The goat. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> the goat. We agree. <laughs> Early Harris ban here for RSG. Now that's... Hello, going to the shadow. This opens up the assassins, right? So Nolan is available. Uh, like the stream, guys. Like the stream. With me. But they pick Thank you. Frederick. You should. Okay. Is this the time where we... Just let go of the uh, junglers, of the assassin junglers. Okay. Right we'll now, see. I feel like it's the e the jungle feels like the easiest, like first two picks, right? First yeah. three picks, and then yeah, specifically in this match, I completely agree. Yeah. The XP laners seem to be the most flexible. Not sure. can play Benedetta. So many weird exactly. XP laner picks. Lapu Lapu is always available as well yeah. for players like Sanford. So, yeah. Ano lang ano no? Fredrin. Uh, Sini secure talaga nila yung Predrin. Uh, Minotaur. Lasa si Predrin uh, ngayon, ita sabay mo pa lang hilian. Uh, uh, Roger is usually their choice. I see lots of prey. Yeah. Okay. Roger. Roger. Uh, Roger. They want to go with the Rome already. I might not be uh, a legend oh, man, yeah. but I, I do know say, my traits. The Barretts. It, it just seems like that's the right so answer. I mean, yeah. Considering, okay, we're gonna throw that most likely in the jungle. Yes, there's still a possibility yeah. that it could be flex. I just don't see, of course, Navs really wanting to go nah. with that. I don't think so. Too. <laughs> no, yeah, guys, it's, uh, it's not Navs, right? So it's like no. you're just gonna go ahead and be like, all right, that's going in the jungle. It's yeah. Fredrin and Barretts. It's probably, and I, we've talked about this pretty extensively previously when they these two teams have gone against each other. It's like. Yeah. Now Carl T's in Demon I know we even built up the story of yeah. these guys have this rivalry going on and everything else, but they gotta just fit that role of, all right, find let's a way. Tanky, you even when all is forlorn. And secure the objective. Uh, yeah. Kindness the dance, is the, the surest path like the team to oh. ruination. Yujong and the Vexana Man. picked up here. Now oh. you're, yeah. A very early Yujong pick here. But, uh, think, uh, this is not the first time that I will say this in the English broadcast. It is uh, Sanford's Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's a, yeah. Have you said that before? Yeah, I said, I that's said a good one. I think, that that? I think you were there. No, that wasn't me, was <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I did not say that. that yeah. Wolf. Okay. Well, I'm pre speaking of Sanford, let's take a look at his career hero stats. Yeah, look at that. Look at the Yuzhong. 18 to 6, man. That's a total of 24 so far. And this guy's, this guy's young, by, by the way. Yeah. So, so that is his, that is his Pikachu. That basically. is his Pikachu, basically. Um. And you know what? I completely agree. This this Barrett is not gonna get flexed. Yeah, I feel like if you sure. ask a player like Nats to play I a Barrett, that's like asking I Michael Jordan to play golf. Well, well, you're oh, not gonna get maximum potential out of it, right? True, yeah. but he does play golf. But yeah, I understand. I understand the, the metaphor because yeah, surely he can play that, but, but um, he will be champion with that. Yeah, you know, your talent is yeah. 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 Well, to be fair, you know, people can. St I, I still respect the people who play XP Barrett. Just yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, especially with a <coughs> player like Nats. Now, um, RSG gonna be looking to ban maybe a Roamer or a Marksman here. Yeah. Um, Claude comes to mind, um, hero that can match up against the Roger, and, and a hero that has been famous or one of the flavors of the week is the Nathan. Oh yeah, Could be, uh, it is in despair oh, that I see the fondest out as soon as you hopes. It, Wolf, Sadly, light me up and watch oh. the world burn. An export? Do you really think Nats will play export? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, no. like I like that. But okay. then you know, yeah. He let's does, think about yeah. this then. Yeah. Let's let's leave it up as what is left for Nats to actually play against the Yuzhong? Like, what would be a great option yeah. against that? Uh, Lapu Lapu comes to mind. Dueling, straight oh, up dueling. Exactly. Yeah. That's like an old dueling. classic M4 matchup. Of course. That's right. <laughs> Uh, a Paquito might be a choice for Nats as well, especially because there's already the Vexana that was shown. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then there's um, other sustained heroes. I think the, the fact that Benedetta is still open kind of tells me that Echo <laughs> I've been waiting to for too long. bait that for uh, RSG to pick that up. Unless uh, um, maybe it's just worthy to ban it actually because of how good Nats can be with that, he uh, with that hero. You know, sometimes I, I know we're talking a lot about Nats here, but I do feel like.
there was a time, or even sometimes from game to game, Nas feels like he has that big responsibility to pull some of those amazing things off. <laughs> Most often he I does, right? But light yeah. that's the thing where you really want to round up this lineup that RSG is going to bring to the table here. Yeah. The Kaj is banned out. So now, again, when we talk about Nas's pick, also the roaming option, Minotaur is still available. Yeah. Do they want to go that? Do they want to go that route here, or is there something better for the roam? I think a Minotaur is really good for RSG. Uh, honestly, for both teams. But then Echo, um, there's something in me. Something in me tells me that this could be a Claude Angela uh, closer for Echo. Uh, very strong, and obviously Angela can also uh, get into the usual at the first few minutes of the game. Yep, that's a viable option here for Echo. So RSG might just pick up the Minotaur right now. It's really good combo too with their with the heroes that they have. That's a light, uh, I would say a light, a what do you call this? Not a light special, it's one of his sidearms. Yeah. You have a primary You have primary weapons, and then there's a sidearm where you can pull okay. off a grok yeah. very good, very well if you need it. Yeah, a reliable hook. As, uh, a reliable hook. As they uh, say for uh, for that one. No, Echo, um, with a cloud being, uh, with a grok being picked up. The way or the highway. So they go Ixia. Ooh, and Ruby. spicy. Now the Paquito looks really interesting for RSG. <laughs> I didn't realize she had a 0% win rate. Ti Benny! I know she hasn't popped up much. Ti Daddy but, Benny! Uh, you know, the fact that she hasn't found a win See ya. yet. Yeah. But still, how's it, how does that look with the lineup that they have here with the Ixia? Yeah. Is this going to work out pretty well for them? Oh. Yeah, they have a lot of protection. Oh, they have, uh, the Vexana and the Ruby, very good combo. Lodjan. Then you pick up the Flicker because uh, there's no more luck luck for RSG, it's okay. And then, when when you look at the the stage, like between Ixia and uh, Roger, Roger almost always wins his lane matchup, but Ixia's range allows glad. her to um, um, have a lot of options to outplay the Roger eventually. Let them come. Okay. They will only right, make same. my way. Like yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. 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 Very, 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 nice. Nice. very nice. Very nice. Like. Yep. So yeah, this, I, I, the win rate of the Ixia, I feel like it's just a matter of you tr testing it out in the waters yeah. for the yeah. past like two uses. You know, something interesting is happening with MPL. What? When Gord is being picked up, Naisu is a... Uh, is on the desk, and yeah. when Ixia is getting picked up, Rockheart is on the desk. <laughs> it's, that's happening? weird, uh, that's right. What is happening? Free games, Ixia is here, past free games. You were there, right? Well, I love, uh, yeah, yeah I lo well, really I like that here. Through. Very underrated, use it, guys, in your rank games, yep. please. Well, while we get uh, situated here for this first game, we want to go ahead and remind everyone once again if you haven't over on YouTube, follow, subscribe to the channel, let us know with hashtags who your feeling is going to win. This match, the star match of the day, is going to be hashtag Echo. Is going to be hashtag RSG. Taking a look at the lineups here, who are you guys feeling more? Don't forget, by the way, your server IDs along with your user IDs to get a chance to win a thousand diamonds. So again, both lineups here looking pretty good. And can we see which team is actually going to go ahead and start off the series stronger here? Again, spots for the playoffs already locked in. They're working for the upper bracket slot at this point now, alongside the other teams here. So with that being said, let's jump into the land of dawn. Game number one here, it's Echo and RSG. Oh, those drums. Man, these drums will really make it hard for me to hear me. Oh, so, but right now, obviously, the dueling capability of Bendy Cutie against Kusei at the early levels is actually pretty good yeah. because of the passive of the Ixia. Your HP just keeps going back as long as you keep attacking. I want to ask you something, Wolf, real quick, as you see the emblems there. Fredrin's got the uh, tanky emblem, Concussive yes. Blast. We know some Fredrin's now like to play with the support emblem. Yeah. Now, when do you think it's right to go ahead and switch that? Why is Carl TV this time opting for that tanky setup this time? Yeah, because they really want to have some bodyguards for this uh, Ixia. Uh, when you go for the support emblem, you kind of want to be the one to supplement the crowd control. And then when you go for the uh, Impure mm. Rage emblem, which yep. uh, is for oh, long by sounds, guys. damage and amplify his farming speed in the jungle. So for Carl TZ going in for the tank emblem, you know that it is for them to peel for this Benicuti Iksha. Okay, we'll see if they can pull that off. Little trying to freeze a lane there a little bit in the bottom side, but also, you know, at this point, JP with his hands on this Ruby, you know, I like you guys mentioned it, he had a little criticism that he had to deal with previously. So this could in a way also be a big redemption game for JP to set things up. The Ruby's yep. one of the best heroes to be able to do that, especially when that flicker is available for the combination now. 
The question is, as we get prepped for this first objective of the game, the turtle is up. Some of these still need that level four. I'm going to say that's a XP because it's Papa level four. I'm going to say that. Who's got the better advantage in this team? I said turtle fight. Come on, Papa level four. I would say because light is not. Yeah, I'm lagging. I'm going to say that. Let's see. Because right now there is going to be I'm offended, not available for you. So everyone else from RSG. I kind of know this is happening. There's a soft reset right oh. now. Eternal Guard already used up. Faulty is in the middle of the fight. First blood goes over the light. And now it's going to be Aqua following up on the JP. They're ignoring the turtle. Turtle is basically bait right now. Wow. Force the flicker out of the Sanji as well. These are very early wins coming into RSG. Raiders come out on top. Unbelievable. Everybody from RSG played so well, all right? In a very smart level. For example, Aqua copied the usual ultimate instead of the typical Vexana ultimate that you copy, right? And then he yeah. went in front of Sanji, forcing that flicker. Sanji could not output the damage for his teammate. And when that happened, Echo didn't have any sort of damage against RSG. And then if you're going to be <coughs> looking at Nats, he waited for his turn to go back, go uh, to the back lines and then forced out the kill onto JP eventually. The timing was there. Then the reset from both uh, Demon Guide as well as... Uh, that's on that part of the turtle. Very smart place. I think that was one of the best executed <laughs> first turtle fights that I've seen in a while. That's what I was going to say, man. It reminded me of a very well choreographed exactly. fight, right? Like everything just seemed to fall in place. The timing was on point for RSG there. Yep. They also played around the objective so well, given the fact that some of the ultimates were available and they weren't, and they brought that fight to so, a longer same. time than it should have been. I think those are the one of the moments where, the rare moments where oh, hold that God. thought though. Nice engagement here coming in from Demon Kai. That's JP not available to activate any of his skills right <laughs> now. Lock, lock. And a lockdown of Sanji. No flicker means no way that he's gonna get out of there. Right now, here comes the full oh. barrage though. Great positioning behind the wall. Getting in a good position, but still the damage is not quite there. Or she's still managing to take these fights, even though they're low HP. Sanford's in there. Carl oh, he's still oh, alive. Oh. Aqua, Aqua gonna get some HP back, but not gonna be able to survive here. Nice trades coming in for both teams. Oh man. <laughs> well, C Carl, do you wanna go ahead and, and say what you were gonna say before that uh, fight broke out? I was about to say, right? Uh, I I forgot. I forgot what I was gonna <laughs> say. Doesn't matter that, anymore. Doesn't, doesn't matter, matter anymore. anymore Dude. Right now, <laughs> these fights are looking super, what? super smooth for both teams. That was so good. It's like an anime sword fight, man. Especially I, because um, Carl TZ, we, we thought that they they will just uh, suffer. And Carl TZ, uh, as he was fight. running away from the... There was a Grok block, yeah. right? He thought, okay, if I pop my ultimate in this particular area, there are four heroes that I will hit so that his HP will be back up. And that's exactly what happened. And Kusei used the like and pounce to dodge the Appraiser's Wrath. How cool was that? that and then was there cool. was Sanford. And then there was Sanji, like everybody from both Echo and RC is playing so good. It also helps that these are heroes who have a lot of dodge. It does look yeah. like an anime fight. That's why MPLPH yeah, yeah. is the best. Now we, we come to this once again. The turtle's going to be up here. So this one looks like it's just going to be that four on four. Carl TZ starting it up. Echo looking anime for their own positioning. Fight. Yep. Light's gonna spot them out though. Good what? damage. Yeah, there's it is. Right now, oh. activate already is gonna be that oh. undefended. Taking care of like very early into the fight. And I think that was also a cancel on the Electo Final Bow. Nats is having wow. a hard time navigating this fight. He can't really help Demon Kite, who is uh, absorbing a lot of damage coming in from Carl Teasy and Sanford. Aqua's under the turn. Demon Kite going down. It's Echo's time this time around. And Echo now. With the counter punch, they'll get themselves this turtle as well. What a team fight for them in yeah. that one. Amazing decision to immediately take on light. Chain stun the Grok with the bar nature is not available. The first skill. And then they went into uh, take out Demon Kite. Big props to Carl TZ actually playing this Fredrin so well. So far has been converting so much damage for Echo while keeping his tabs on bigger objectives, like keeping his eye on Demon Kite, not letting him go with the chain stuns that you get from the Fredrin. Even when they're both tanky dudes, eventually the Fredrin will out-sustain the Barrett's. Hey, kudos, uh, there are a few people in the world who can cancel oh, a, 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 a little final blow, like I was about to say there. Um, and uh, Echo, they're one of the few teams who can do that, but look at that, that was a great trade, a great exchange here. Love the battle of these 
micro plays, even just between the laners themselves. They're going to anime fight there. Yeah, Sanford's going to keep him back. Of course, that's Sanford hand also hand favors the Benedetta, yeah. knows really the yes. intricacies there for that that's hero. Right. And now it's <coughs> pretty much even Stevens, yeah. you know, at this point, which is great because leading in to that next objective, <coughs> we'll see how this all plays apart for these teams. My big question here, because of the zero percent, hold on, Sanford, he's gonna yep. use the dragon. He's gonna go ahead and use his trump card. Oh, he's right. Right. Use yep. this in attack position, and oh, they're trying to go for it. Nats, though, has the magnify, dodges out of it as well. My goodness, Are these you kidding me? these cheats. Are you kidding hey, me? It's, it's his Pikachu for a reason, Wolf, like oh, you said. Oh, man. And then Nats just uh, tried to dodge ah, some man, of that massive stuff from uh, Sanford. Man, man, Even man, having man, to use man, the Electro like, Final Blow just to man, man. get into safety. That was a 1v2 that Sanford technically came up on top, but the fact of the matter is he does not have the ultimate for the, ah, so what the aim first three seconds of the Did North fight. Here, so, as we have a little downtime here, this is my question. Lord's coming up here in just a second. <laughs> The Ixia, how long does she need to get that power spike where you see uh, yeah. from a lot of these gold laners here? Rock hard. I know Min usually wolf answers, but yeah. you love the Ixia. Minimum two <laughs> items. First, you need your, your basically Demon Hunter Sword. That's 100%. And then you get Corrosion Sight. After that, you can probably try to fight. But in this <laughs> specific scenario, <laughs> I think you also need Wind of Nature early. Oh, right? Especially because uh, you're facing up against Nats. Yes. That's correct. So, I would normally say that it's uh, the three item power spike that uh, that we call it's uh, called T uh, tips, T I P S. In, uh, oh, nice. Uh, three what, item what? power spike. Three. three. Okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. <laughs> you have to wait for that. Uh, but then, because of the, the uh, because of the fact that there's uh, Benedetta and uh, Roger, yeah, it should be the wind of nature item timing, which will come after the three item power spike for the Iksha. Okay, we'll see how that uh, plays a part here. Both teams kind of just setting up right now, yeah, getting yeah. the buffs that they can. They'll set up for this dance first lord of the game. And so far, even with that lead that RSG has right now, it's, it's really minuscule. It doesn't really matter much in the grand scheme of this team fight. And you can see even both XP laners staying on that top side, putting the pressure where they can. Wow, Sanford, though. Sanford, 1v2 once again, even forcing Nats back. But Nats, uh -oh. he's also trying to multitask. He's trying to dodge out of harm's way and trying to get some damage onto that turret, which will eventually fall. But the fight is happening right now underneath that turret. Oh, not underneath the Lord, rather. And everyone's jumping around. Nice sins coming in from the Lord. Back wow. attack from Aqua as well. Oh, but boy. here comes Benny Cutie. Full barrage in tow. Takes care of the jungler of RSG. And that's to say gone. Or that's not a jungle, that's a gold lane rather. Well, it's Demon Kite going down. Oh, there you go. They got what they wanted though. That's a huge win for Echo in terms of team fights. Unbelievable mechanics that we're seeing in from both teams. Echo. As well as RSG, you saw Sanford commit the ultimate onto Nats and eventually completing the kill. And Nats denied of the push up top as well. But then RSG, for some reason, won the Lord fight. And, the, well, some of those reasons, well, one of those reasons will be Aqua, actually, transforming into the Dragon form, going directly onto Sanji. It's a, the lane to lane matchup battles are amazing this game. That's interesting, right? He's been choosing that dragon form for a yeah. while now. Because he knows that he can one-shot Sanji. Yeah. Uh, up until the point where Winter Trunchen is available for Sanji, I think he will keep on doing it. He wants uh, to try too, man. Yep. You know, that's just part of it. And uh, <laughs> with that, Aqua's been having a great game for the most part. It's now, when you get to this part, First Lord's taking care of and everything. The juggling of the ultimates that he wants to play around with will play a big part of this. Benny Cutie also just picking up that Wind of Nature, like you guys mentioned. Look at the damage difference here, though, between them. It's massive. Obviously, there's a huge burst when you use a Roger, but uh, yeah. you know what? The Iksha does damage to everything. I was going to say, so. he doesn't have... Uh, unfortunately, Roger doesn't have a, a full barrage. You know? He doesn't like, have a full barrage. He has one gun. <laughs> yeah. One gun. You get one. <laughs> All right? And claws. Yeah, 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 I was just I saying. I guess, technically yeah. speaking, the... <laughs> I can count <laughs> many, but, you know... Multi-target, yeah. Multi-target, but uh, yeah, I do agree that... Um, okay, so that's the Wind of Nature that we're talking about. Was indeed the third item, so... Now you can use the Ixia, and every time that the Flicker is up, Echo will feel confident that they can team fight, And they can team fight actually. It's just that RSG's Power Spike was, in that moment, the first Lord. And they played it so well. I think Aqua might be the... Uh, Actual game changer in this uh, particular game, number one. It does. Yeah, it does seem so.
For the yeah. game changer here being Aqua, something that a lot of people that have been watching RSU for a while, rooting for them, knows how Navs likes to play. So is his job of split pushing on this Benedetta, is it going to be hard with the lineup that Echo has mm. here to, to try to contain this? Will, will Navs be a key component? as well as Aqua uh, for this actually getting game one under their belt for RSG here, Wolf? I would say yes. Uh, just because of the nature of Echo's composition, they're quite, uh, it's almost like fr traditional front to back. It's traditional box that they have to just group up as five. And um, every time that Nats is split pushing and controlling the lanes, that means that somebody has to answer those lanes. But then Echo, they're really, they're really, they are really adept with this kind of play style because they are, <laughs> they are the ones who like to split push, you know. Yeah. So they know the the macro, the ins and outs of this kind of play style. So yeah. I would say yes, Nats is Nats's split pushing potential is impactful, but Echo is known to handle it. Well, you know, obviously, with the low mobility of the Iksha, they, yeah. Benny Q, they can't do the old, you know, tricks. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, yeah, I would <laughs> for say. For sure. <laughs> The old maneuver of the back door yeah. that uh, Benny goes for. The back door Benny. Yeah, back door Benny. It's way better, obviously, too, just with this lineup that, you know, they kind of control. They they keep Benny QD boxed in themselves on a defensive front, keeping him alive. Because even for RSG, man, there's so many options that they can to get to Benny QD. But still, with that being said, it looks like we might see a full on team fight here for this one. The Lord, for sure. Less than half health here. The question is who's going to be the target right now? And uh, Iksha obviously very far away from this fight, but he can come close very soon as long as Sanford is up front, as well as JP looking for Aqua right now. And it's going to be a 50-50 on the Lord. Who gets it? It's going to be Carl. And they get it, and they are in a good position to do the oh, good damage right oh, now. Yeah. And there we go, the bombing being given by Benny Cutie. Kusei, he's in trouble. He's going to go down. Demon Kaidara, the light is low. Oh my goodness, it's a disaster for RSG, man. <laughs> Damn. Absolute disaster. Ooh. RSG, their, their game plan was to look for either Sanji or Ben Cutie. They have found Sanji and took him out easily. But then, because they have committed the Dragon Form from Aqua and, and the Petrify onto Nats, Ben Cutie felt very confident. Didn't have, even have to pop the flicker yeah. in that fight. It was so worth for Echo there. And I saw what Nats was doing. He was really trying to just keep Ben Cutie from being That's a part cute. of that fight. Yeah, Sanji got lost in that, but. All for the better. He got a triple me, off of the me, me, and now you can see the real time one right here, 54% for them. So they're definitely going to get some space to work with. But this is not the end for RSG just yet. For sure. Now, given how that last fight went, and we know that a lot of that damage, a lot of that burst came from Benny Cutie setting up the full barrage, didn't need the flicker, so they could still possibly make a play here with a setup unless Echo decides, okay, we're happy with these turrets being down, the tier twos, we're knocking on the base, we already got one turret of RSG. They could essentially replicate the fight in about a minute and a half for the next board. Because RSG, given the fact that how that all went, if they actually get a favorable team fight, they have to work themselves. They still have to respect the set potential from light here. So now for Echo, it's really just kind of the patient game until they decide, all right, let's grab that objective. Um, na, si but no, you na, just na, gotta say. kind of wait to see how that goes. But the replay coming up here, Wolf, take us through it. Uh, let's see what uh, what happened in this exchange. Aqua and uh, Nats on the left side. Nats didn't have to petrify anymore in this case. And then because Benny Kitty was protected by JP anyways, even after the full barrage being cancelled, he still already did his job to... Output the damage onto RSG in the absence of Sanji. And to be fair, RSG's game plan of eliminating Sanji as soon as possible, that's actually a really good uh, understanding of the game because we know that Sanji and the Vexana in general outputs the damage for the team. Yeah, the think... fact that they're taking it off is great. And also, Sanji now has the win Winter, Winter Truncheon, Truncheon, which I uh, talked about earlier. Yeah. I think the biggest factor in that team fight was Aqua died so early. He got bursted. He got caught by JP, which is right. the genius, right? The small things you don't always notice. Whoa! It's a big deal, which right now happening as well. Of course, Black Dragon form to walk out <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, the 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 Look at this. Yeah, it's the yeah, re-engage 2v4. Are you sure? Oh, Are you going to go ahead and fight this? Here's the rest That's of the Echo squad <laughs> here. It, and it's going to be Kusei on the run. Oh, Can he, though? Oh, I don't oh, think so. That's going to be one for Echo instead. What a turn. Oh, that is tough. 
for RSG. Now Nav's here. What's gonna happen? 1v5, even you can be the slipperiest <laughs> Benedetta, you'll still go down there. Yeah, he can't, especially because of the Winter Truncheon. And he had no choice. He had to gamble for a fight. But then now RSG, because of some uh, mistakes that they did, will lose control of the Lord for sure. Man, oh, they threw, errors. Yeah, they threw so much at trying to get Sanford there, knowing that he did have the Dragon Form as well. And then they got sandwiched off. Okay. And displaced. So to now, Lord taken. They're on the defense. To be fair, almost. They almost got him. They canceled Black Dragon form like two times in that exchange. But it obviously, it wasn't enough. This and almost too risky, though. Like even if they got him, you know, like the, the sandwich was gonna happen nonetheless. Yeah. And you threw you threw so much at Sanford there that still, <laughs> RC now has to kind of recollect themselves, dealing with this Lord push. It's bottom side. They do have this immortality available for Light. He is going to be the one to set things up once again. Has the flicker avail available as well. But still, working against JP. JP has been on the hunt now at this point, especially his his own immortality, immortality up. So now they work here. Mid lane, conceal play comes through. Yeah. Yep. Nice conceal play. Echo keeping their eyes on Nats. That's super crucial. Top side also has the minions pushing, and I think this should be a very easy cleanup for RSG. Demon Kite oh, committed yeah. the ultimate. Right now, they're holding their ults very, very well. Aqua, Black Dragon form once again. Carl Teasy is inside the base. They're waiting for more. Here's the real deal. Here comes the the one you actually order oh. here. Coming in from the front, from the back. Ooh, oh, yeah. There's going to be a knock up on his head. <laughs> Who also has to pop away the nature, try to stay alive. Petrified from Sanford, oh my goodness! And of course, here comes the full barrage. Better late than never. Coming in clutch and cleaning it up for Echo. That should be it. Echo cleanly wins on this fight. Calm and collected. Echo gets on the express to take game number one here against the Raiders. Looking pretty good here for Echo Wolf. 100%, man, that was a wonderful game to see. And even as we say that, there were some times, well, some moments where you say that, yeah, game. RSG made a mistake. Like the top, top lane push onto Sanford and eventually Nats. And then on that defense, they popped Demon Garrick's ultimate way too early, as well as Aqua's ultimate, so maybe some miscommunications happen in there. Echo is renewed, and this is probably one of the best we've seen Echo all throughout this season, right? Because surprisingly, yeah. surprisingly it is up against RSG. Ah. And, <laughs> and, and interestingly, I think uh, Echo and the members of Echo themselves will always admit that, yeah, when it comes to like who's, who they think is the, the, the most entertaining and most fun that they face, it's usually RSG, actually. Yeah. They're, uh, yeah, I, like, I know a lot of people like to say NAS entertainment, but RSG is entertainment as a whole, right? The, the lineup and some of the choices that they take. I do still say that I think RSG is one of those teams because this whole, you know, Coach Panda, the Panda Mentals, they are one of the teams that has this very foundational fundamentals that they focus on. And sometimes they take chances. But this Ooh. guy right here, MVP, Carl TZ, stopped him in this game number one here. Yeah. Woo, and um, the MVP reward to Carl TZ, especially with his performance in this game. I would say with 3 1 and 10 and the Blade Armor Rush, uh, well, this is not actually an actual rush because uh, I think it's the third item we had to sell the Molten Essence, but the Athena Shield. <coughs> and also the way that he played in this game is. MVP worthy, but you really have to understand the game so much to appreciate what he did. Because my own oh the way that he utilized this Frederick is different from any other team. There was one time that he was, if this was basketball, it's like a man to man defense versus Demon Kind. Great first clash for RSG. Phenomenal, in fact, the way that it's uh, beautifully synchronized for sure. And then uh, watch out for Carl Tizi going in and out of the fight. Then eventually just pops the uh, first kill to force out Demon Kite and then uh, his teammates. Then he in eventually gets out of this alive <laughs> for some reason. May nakita ako dito guys. And then look at that beautiful usage of the Praetor's Wrath. But eventually <laughs> his teammate Benny Cutie will be there. Carl Tizi still uh, th to be taken up by Aqua. But that meant that RSG's positioning was bad afterwards. And this is a great... 
sequence of fights, eventually favoring Echo because of how much they saved the Benicuti. It kind of felt like Sanji was the bait for RSG to overcommit. And then when the Petrify was used, Benicuti was there to punish them afterwards. And look at that chain of stuns. Carl Kizzy, for some reason, gets out of this alive because of the support of his teammates. And just uh, immediately taking out Demon Knight afterwards. Carl Kizzy, the way that he, the, the reason why he's the MVP of this game is because he was able to contain his lane matchup with Demon Kite, not dying so much, only died once in this game, and then made sure that he was there on the clutch Lord, the second Lord of the game, which allowed Echo to snowball against RSG and take the better trades afterwards. Very even game. If you're looking at the turrets, if you're looking at the Lord exchanges between the teams, the turtles that we've seen, and then the buffs, you know that nobody actually snowballed against each other. This was not a comeback or recovery. This is just straight up a tug of war between two of the best teams that we've seen so far, mechanically speaking, here in the Philippines. Their team fighting was top notch. And Benny Cutie, getting the Thunderbolt afterwards and the Rose Gold Meteor, making it making it so that when RSG tries to die for him with, between like Aqua going for the Valentina and uh, Yu Zhong, and then of course uh, Nats with this signature Benedetta. You're seeing now how strong he is with this hero and then he's able to keep his ground up. Like, and uh, that's also the reason why he's the carry this time. 716 GPM, damage dealt is 54.9000. Demon Kite the sandbag and then Sanji the wingman. It, despite being the Vexana who's always taken out by both Nats as well as Aqua, still managed to impact the game. The, the game. I have to say though, this is uh, RSG really prepared for what Echo was uh, trying to do, but then Echo was also equally prepared, showing us this Ixchel uh, power pick from Echo. Benigit is one of those loyalists for this Ixchel. Um, him and Eman were the only players that I remember when I think about Ixchel. And then knowing that Roger is one of the best heroes in the meta game that we have right now, and then RSG straight up banned out the the Harith and then eventually the Nathans, which are traditional counters to the lane of the Roger. Them picking up this Iksha meant that Echo really did prepare for the meta game that we have right now. So they're basically anti-stratting right now versus RSG or anti-meta, which is great. And they picked up the Yuzhong very earlier on. This is a second phase or first phase picked yep. um, Yuzhong, which you know, Sanford showed us how it's uh, how it's done versus the Benedetta. Even even showing us how uh, Yuzhong can one shot a Benedetta. There's a lot of reasons why Wolf mentioned earlier that it's his Pikachu. We yeah. saw that there uh, again. Yuzhong here, he likes it. What was his record? 18 and six. So now something along the lines like that. So now he's 19 and six. Um, and he showed the mastery there again of that hero and. At the same time, I gotta say, congratulations now to Iksha and finally, you too as well, right? Rockheart. Finally has a win. Yeah. He's got a win. And uh, I was just thinking about that too. It was actually very difficult for RSG and some of those team fights that broke out because think about it, you're dealing with that cone in the full barrage, and you're also dealing with the, a little bit of a smaller cone from the appraiser's wrap. Right. So like your right. frontal, yeah. It's just a danger zone entirely. Exactly. It's just so hard for them to find an angle. It's super surprising. It's one of the games where Nats plays a Benedetta and it doesn't shine. It doesn't yeah. like break through anything. Right? Yep. So it's a rare moment for Nats and Benedetta. Yeah. Uh, I think um, Echo really was prepared for that. And not only in the late to late matchup, but also like the way that they, uh, the deformation was done. And we're talking about like uh, the actual positionings of the players and the heroes during a team fight in that front to back where they protected San Sanji long enough and then they also protected <coughs> Benny Cutie. Again, great game number one, but also before we talk more about game two ahead of us, we want to give a big shout out, of course, to all the MLBB players across Calabazar, Calabarzon. That is a tough word to say. The All-Star Caravan Extravaganza will now continue to bring fun, joy, and lots of awesome games. And so, you know what, you can join us on this epic journey from April 1 to 20, April 21, as you visit university, senior high schools, junior high schools, barangays, and Vista Malls. So make sure to come and compete for a chance to win exclusive prizes and free giveaways that's on site. And take note, pro players and casters will also be there to meet and greet you. See you there. I think, um, Burrito, we've seen him. Yeah, with, with, uh, with uh, I think um, I think I saw Joshi there. I, I was I was there as well. Oh, you were the there as well. Guys. Yeah, it yeah. was pretty fun. How do you guys say that? Calabarzon. Calabarzon. 
Ha Calabar Zone. Calabar Zone. Calabar Zone. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Calabar Zone. Shout out to you guys. Yeah. That's Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Batangas. Batangas. Rizal, and Quezon. Okay, good oh, to yes. know. I didn't do very well good. in my geography class. <laughs> but uh, now let's take a look at the draft recap for game number one here. You're, if you missed it, it was a great game number one for a while. Amazing. RSG actually started out with the early advantage, but Echo kind of counter punch and slap back here. Now, what I'm really wondering is how does RSG kind of situate themselves for the next game, right? Because the thing yeah. is, is they had a good early game. It was shockingly good. It looked like it was very well planned, That's especially right. that yeah. bait turtle that they did. Yeah. They knew they were going to get at least yeah. two kills, three kills. Hey, what's the adjustment from Echo? And I'm going to sound like a broken Banik record. Siya, next. During that second the Lord Banik team, Siya, fight, you saw that Sanji uh, was got upon by Aqua. But uh, but then Either Aqua kind of had to call the Benedict as well because of Sanji was just in the uh, most opportune uh, position to still pop his ultimate, but be taken out long enough for Aqua as well as Sanji to, uh, sorry, Aqua as well as uh, Nats to um, utilize all of their spells. Yeah. Nats had to pop the Petrify very early, but he had to really use that Petrify to eventually take out Benicuti. But then when Benicuti saw that there wasn't any more Petrify, was already good. And big props to uh, JP actually protecting both Sanji and Benicuti in that clash. Right. Well, also big props to Carl Teasy here. Tank Era. He's currently fourth in all-time damage taken. That's a oh. whole lot of damage. And uh, he's the only jungler in the top five with Edward, who's top one. Renzio, top two. Jack New, top four. And a flap Teasy, top five. Oh. That's 27 million. You remember there was like a goal set after M4. Yeah. Like, what do you want to achieve? Yeah. Carl Teasy said he wanted to reach top damage taken. Yeah, because he's already got the kills. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so and I, I think assist does, oh, not, not really assist, but damage dealt, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's definitely got a few, right? Yeah. Uh, he's on the way as well. He's on the way. So I, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys this. Maybe even you guys are watching online. Who is, uh, I guess, when you look at the lineups you've seen from Echo, you've seen the outplay side of the lineup, yeah. and you've seen Benny, and now in the Carl TZ lineup. As we take a look here at the Romer options from this, I want to ask you guys, how the lineup this one because this, this is the second time I think that we've seen now Carl Tizzi and Benny Cutie uh, pretty much coming to play because there's been so much swapping around right yeah. is this working better for Echo or is there a chance that we once again see outplayed and Zyna come through for the rest of the regular season Ooh. Um, I think it no matter what happens I think that they will play Zyna and outplayed knowing Echo they're just that kind of franchise um, I would say though that um, it will take the entire regular season for them to eventually decide who they pick up for the playoffs. It's easy for me to say that it's Carl Tizzi as well as Benicuti, but who knows, man. I think um, there will come a time where Echo will now be using um, Outplay and Zyda against like, the top four teams. Because yeah. so far what they have been doing is to utilize uh, Zyda and uh, Outplay in teams that are in the lower part of the, uh, the standings. Let me ask you this, and maybe Rock Hard, you can do this. Do you think there's much of a difference when it comes to Zyda and Outplayed in terms of the play style of Echo, or is it pretty much the same? I think they're both strong, yeah. to be honest. Uh, it, it's, it depends on the flavor of the day. I think pro players have that. Like, uh, I, I believe like I've seen teams before where they base it off of what happens during scrims. So right. I don't think Echo plays that way. I think they just tailor suit it to who they're fighting against that day. Alighted, man, Maybe it I just so happens that, you know, we see a Carl TZ Benicuity combo twice in a row. Yeah, well, it's so far, again, working here. Red side win rate for them <laughs> is 75%. <laughs> We've got 60% for us here on this blue the side. This time, they'll get themselves that first pick here. We see the bands already coming out too, the Louis Yi, the Barretts this time around. Um, wondering if they want to go ahead and prioritize the Fredrin for Demon Kite this time. Now for Echo, they've already taken out the Faramis and the Matilda. We'll see again too, if they still want to respect the whole Arlot thing yeah. that we've been talking about for Nats here, and if that's Good. the route they want to go. By the way, Nolan was completely ignored in the previous uh, game. It was the changes just, the little changes that he's had, was yeah. it just that big of an effect? I think it's more of the base out of the two teams. No because uh, um, I believe that both RSG and Echo they put their quote unquote me? carry <laughs> in the uh, gold lane role. So, okay, so no Fredrin, no Barats. I think this is the time where you say, okay, let's go Assassins. Assassins in the jungle. Yep, no Baksha, no, no Barats, Fred, yep. no Fredrin. Ooh. 
Ooh, is so, this a challenge? I was going to say, that, that might be... It feels like a challenge from both teams. <laughs> might be a challenge. Again, we were talking about leading into this matchup, Demon Kai and Carl Tizzi. Blood up. We know that they respect each other quite a bit. So we'll see if they actually want to bring in the Assassin junglers for this. Joy is up too. I'm not sure if they actually wanted to put that in Demon Kite's hands. We've seen him play it again uh, before. Nolan though will come through. Where's the Nolan? Despite what we were just talking about, is this is this the best start for them here? Well, yep. yeah. I think uh, you know my guess for Echo is Angela Yuzhong. Oh. It sounds weird, like Arlot being open, but this could be. Yuzhong Angela for Echo. Refresh nyo lang guys, refresh nyo lang. Okay na, okay na. Okay na internet. It was a Nolan very successful. Okay na internet guys, refresh nyo lang. Refresh nyo lang live nyo. Ay yung ano nyo, yung video nyo. You're also denying the Nolan against Carl TZ. So it's two birds, one stone. What is, what is so, I mean, is the difficult part of making Nolan work, is he just, is it, is he too fragile? Yeah. You know, in most times? I would say farm dependent is yeah. the term that I would use. Well, it's okay, so hard to fix. They take the R lot. Yeah, they what take the normal engage. route. <laughs> Scary engagement coming yep. in from Echo. Okay, so when you do pick up the Nolan, what you typically do is have a sustained EXP laner in a hard tank. Okay, na guys, so okay, I think na. it's worth it for RSG to pick up the Minotaur this time. Light mm. is uh, a very strong Minotaur player yeah. as well. And they do pick up the Valentina. Valentina uh, looks really good here. Even when it's like a, uh, it, it's it's the Vexana that they're picking up. There's two good ultimates already copy. I like that. I, I also don't forget Final Slash Aqua. Yeah. He also likes playing around that. Yep. yep. So you're absolutely right. I okay. so sure is the yep sustain the XP lane. <laughs> I was going to say, anytime, I feel like any time we've been on the desk together here, Wolf, and you've mentioned it, when Nolan does come through, yeah. that it, he is expensive, right? Expensive. So sometimes expensive. we've seen we've seen uh, lineups where they have Nolan, Roger, and you're like, oh, it's a little too expensive for that. So uh, this time around, we'll see what they play with. Also, taking a look at this, the top, we got two top ones here. We got Kosei and Domeng sitting at 59. Total <laughs> kills with Super Marco at 58. <laughs> Yeah. So interesting again, almost near. Yes, sir. Season. Only three watching, be including you. Up, though, from Echo to round out that first <laughs> phase. They ban Harith. They eventually will ban out uh, perhaps a uh, uh, Nathan or a Brody. Uh, Soon it will be three K watching or three hundred thousand watching, bro. For a more stable and easy um, gold daner, or not that farm dependent, and RSG are going to be looking to ban their junglers, perhaps. Hmm. What what Who's could be just, Yeah, Martis is left, <laughs> Akai is left. Akai, yeah. I think I'll say what like is the thing guys, thank you. Hmm. <coughs> oh, interesting. I would say <coughs> Joy. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, Joy. Yeah. Um, Fredrin, in, in a way, because of just the speed. The power of light. Uh, I oh, told I you they will ban the, the, the Fredrin. Uh, oh, because yeah. that's a hero that ban you pick up against the Nolan. Arlot room. room. Yep, the Hilda room. So you think this is a sand for XP. Uh, XP Yuzong again? Yeah. Or Pakito. I mean, Pakito. Uh, the, the benefit of having the Hilda is XP you Pakito. Um, make it difficult for the Nolan to farm. Right. So basically, you you have like a task. Yeah, yeah. You're you have, have a... like one game, one goal this game. Exactly. It's like back in the time when teams would just pick up the. Fanny, XP right? Pakito. Like, right, take the hill, though. You're XP one Pakito job. for. Make it hard to get the buffs. Exactly. That's all you want to do. And so, uh, the ban is going to be the Yuzong, though. So, Akai. So take that out of here. Now the Akai for Echo. Baksha. Taking Baksha. Akai or. Baksha. Akai or Martis. Martis, Pedro. Call TZ. Well, as far as utility junglers are. Concerned. Akai or There's also Baksha that joy or factor ah, no, no. for which we have not talked about. Mm -hmm. Akai, a joy Akai Martis for um, closer for Echo. Sounds okay. Yeah. Can also work for the for the it's Roger. either Arlot Room or yeah. XP. Um, so I think I think you pick up the jungler here for Echo so that you can and keep the Arlot's flexibility. Pakito. Yep. Between Martin and XP Pakito. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh man, it has been a long time. Good flex too. We don't know yet <coughs> where that Guinevere will go. Could be jungler, could be roamer. Jungler, roam. XP, if wow. they're crazy enough. Yeah. <laughs> what are these two doing? Oh, speaking of, 
while we wait for these uh, picks. Shout out to yeah. Manjean and Reptar. What are they doing? The Renmar. Are they they're, in game? They're playing. Ah. Are they There's playing right probably. behind the desk? These probably. guys don't stop. Yep. Grind never the grind stops. stops. The grind <laughs> never stops. <laughs> um, taking Brody actually for RG. Brody and what? Rafaela and a Minotaur. Or if they're crazy, they go diggy. But I doubt that will happen. Yeah. I Mino Brody, I think. Mino maybe. Yeah. Go with Mino. Get a little bit of that. Uh, oh, Cho wow. Cho carry. Cho carry. Wow. So hey, right? Rockheart mentioned this earlier. Spicy. So like to one of the last few. <laughs> like yeah. Cho players. Pakito, Esti Pakito. I still or always Bene. like seeing the Cho because it's Bene, you know, Bene, aside from it's very flashy. It also forces your opponents to be, be more defensive. They have to pick up purifies yeah. instead of flicker, right? Yeah. Most of them. At least. Kasi pakita yan, since there is na yung kalapak pa pa pa. Like you work against Cho as well. Yeah. Para makaingot mas mabilis. So you can really be in front of the Cho no matter, um, all the time. Yeah. Oh, Minotaur na, no? They decided to go with Minotaur. And it's with Veer Jungle. Yep, this is, uh, by the way, great combo. Uh, passive of the Guinevere with all the knock-ups. Minotaur also... Uh, I mean, if you come with the Vexana with the Guinevere too, with a lot of knockups, it's oh also really goodness. good. Everyone's <laughs> jumping. Yep. Was say, Everyone's jumping. This, this lineup, when you look at it from Echo, this is the you can't play lineup. You can't play lineup. <laughs> then <laughs> you, you might as well just drop your phone. <laughs> and, you, and guess which hero likes to have so much CCs? Yeah. Arlot. Oh. Yeah. The end. Exactly. So. So let us Loving know. It. Let Loving us know it. which uh, lineup it. you guys are feeling more here. You've got our thoughts, of course. Is it going to be RSG? Is it going to be Echo? Don't forget, too, if you're watching on YouTube, we're doing a giveaway for the star match of the day for winners of 1,000 diamonds. You can let us know with either hashtag Echo or hashtag RSG, and then your user ID along with your user ID for server, for server ID, yep. and get a chance to win one of those prizes of 1,000 diamonds. And also, for everyone on TikTok, don't forget the goodie bags as well in the top left corner. With all that being said, the drums are sounding. Let's jump into the land of dawn here. Game two, match point though yep. for Echo. It's Echo and RSG. If, if you uh, pay a little bit of attention during the, the stats that appeared before the match, RSG, RSG's uh, crowd control rating is around three. Echo's crowd control rating is, four, uh, is six actually, so twice as much as RSG. Man, I have missed Ben, tanong stick. Bixana, no? Yeah. Laging may Bixana. Oh, Emblem yeah, yeah. builds, anything sticking out? Okay. Impure Rage <laughs> on Demon Kite. Usually you go... Guys, just to refresh uh, your... Uh, lethal Ignition if you're Nolan. Uh, Impure Rage on Benny Cutie. Refresh me lang, guys. Oh, wow. All right. Lalo ko yung turn eh. Oh, no! Like, All right, now Lalo Light being punished very, very heavily here. <laughs> Obviously by the Guinevere. And that's really right, you don't need to be your ultimates. You can fight, you yep. can have so much damage early on, and then when you do have your ultimate, everyone has to make a run for the game. That's also the thing with uh, Cho now. That's the reason why Cho is not being picked up as much as, uh, as, as, much as, as, as he was before this, because of how uh, squishy the Cho can be in the early stages. Especially early on, right? Oh, oh, oh. It, it hits. Kai feels that too, but Benny. that's the thing for Light. He's got to kind of just, it was like, all right, I want to get some vision, but at the same time, he's very susceptible to taking early damage. And really, you just got to wait for that level four. That's when you want to be making those plays. So now with this, you know, the, the first blood, the kill going over to Carl TZ, gives him a very, a little bit of boost that he had here. He's going to set up for this first turtle. And we'll see if RSG decides to just give this one up, let it be for now, and kind of recalibrate from like the stream, guys. Thank you. And knowing that they have an assassin jungler, RSG will not even attempt to contest that turn. Nice one, Echo. Not a Let's chance. go, Echo. And yeah, that's, a, that's what you Let's do with the Nolan, anyways. You just farm and farm and farm. And it, um, you actually get more EXP if you focus on farm. We'll see if they actually want to. Put the no retribution here. though. Light. Yeah, Light's got the uh, way the dragon. Very deep in, but instead I think he's the one who's gonna get punished very wow. severely. Like we mentioned, man, if one of these guys catch you, just put down your phone. Give it up, man. You can't move. All this play in the book. When uh, we talk about like MOBA, and they're asked, what is the general keys to victory in winning a MOBA? No matter what happens, no matter what MOBA it is, more stands, stuns, 
More chances of winning. That's it. That's basically it. That's basically it. <laughs> more stunts. Yep. Okay. That now I know. Yep. I've been yeah, playing for so yeah. long since yeah. the release of the game. Malas kasi sa lane niya mo. Damn. No. Your hero <laughs> does both. Your hero <laughs> does the stunts true. and you do the damage. Yeah, yeah I ignore so. the stunts though. All right. <laughs> it's all about the Mystic Gush. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> the damage. So with that, Ooh. now oh, they're going to go for it. Oh, this uh, heavy punishment here coming in from RSG. Oh. He's playing very well though. He is dodging. He is. Man, that was very close to actually him taking down Aqua as well. But look at this. Answer on the top. It's a gold lane traded. And there could be more, but life will be under the turret here. Still surviving, but Echo also knows how to punish, man. And you see that zone up from both JP as well as Sanji so that the uh, light will not catch up. And now they might, uh, they will uh, lose one of the cards. Yeah, uh, the carry. We'll have to give it to Aqua, so that means that they're yeah, gold they're 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 having a good time. Okay, it's interesting. A tiebreaker, I guess. No tiebreaker. Games played. I would say most of the times when we see the Valentina, though, does she doesn't even really opt to take the Eternal Guard. You know, for the most yeah. part, you see them taking different ultimates uh, for that. So, with this, once again, RSG looks like they want to put pressure here. And look at that. This is good pressure. Counter attack oh. here. Coming in from Echo is actually stronger for some reason, even though that was started by Light. What was that about? XP for oh, Well, they, there was the Minotaur that they tried to go for. We know that the Minotaur is very tanky. Body of Smith, uh, unfortunately, not that. They think it's not that high yet. And Sanford stealing the orange buff. Huh. Yeah, he just pushed him out of there, man. Like, it's tough for Demon Kite. And this is what you were talking about, yeah. even for the fact that, okay, Nolan, when you consider him picked up for these teams or either given up, he, he's expensive. Like, yeah. you have to protect him or at least give him the opportunity to farm up That's and have it. this early game. Because even if he pokes down, you know, a couple members of Echo like this, really, you need so much more time here. Okay, you know, he's only got the blade. Sure. That's a, that's a big problem. A big, uh, adjustment that he have to take afterwards. That means that, uh, Echo will now be in control. Oh, boy. And this is, this time, though, Sanji will have, I would guess that he will be dealing the most damage because compared to the previous game, the only problem that he has to face right now is Demon Cat, and Demon Cat is not yet a problem oh. for Echo. Getting yeah. these buffs are going to be a problem here. Big fight here, Manoa Fury used to engage and oh. started up with that beautiful Violet Requiem. Not even Nats can sustain the damage coming in from Echo right now. Okay. Even Kusei, he's level CC 7. No damage can a level 7 carry do against a lineup like this, boom. Man. We ask how many, I mean, how many stuns do you need, Echo? How many knockups do you need? Echo said yes. <laughs> yes, sir. That's we the have answer. All of them. It's oh, such a good lineup. Uh, it is. With, with like, what goodness. they wanted to execute here. Carl Tizi clearly knows how much of a lead they have as well. Light, even just second guessing, maybe not. Let's not kick him because, you know, at the, at the time, the response is going to be there. Carl Tizi just showing face. Again, they've garnered themselves a nice lead at this point in the game. Still waiting for that next turn to come up here. But right now, gold difference-wise, you're seeing it. Especially that gold lane. Oh, yeah. We talked about the missed gold cart earlier, and things start to build up ah, here between really? the gold laners. Yep. Compounding effect. Exponential growth for Benicuti for now. And that is their, the gap between the gold laners. And oh. in comes the pinch. Ooh, here it comes. So who starts it up? It's going to be JP. Forces oh, that yeah. purify out of the carry, and Kusei can't get out of there anyway. So, all yeah. that that wasn't even full force yet. We still have like the Violet Requiem available. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Right? Uh, well, I know you just shook your head at this too because you saw the, the knock ups to CC, and then here comes the Eternal Guard. Exactly. It like, also knocks you up. Like, I mean, like you purify one knock up, and then there's <laughs> a ton more afterwards. Oh man. Some people would say it's safer to just not buy Purify here, just go straight. You start the fights. Yeah. Right? You don't let Echo start. Oh. Oh, okay, so. Oh, but look at this though. They are trying very hard. <laughs> Sanford, a huge counter attack coming in from this Arla. Dodges out of this. Oh my goodness. This is actually really oh, good for no. here coming in from Echo right now. Who Ultimino. are going to be pushing that. Again, not even. Ulti Come on, Yusuf can save you. From the damage coming in from Echo and the crowd control, man. Your body Ooh. of Smith can't cancel out of that one. <laughs> Demon Cat's like, yeah, I'm out. I'm going to go get I'm the out. orange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. 
Yeah, I mean, Echo really feeling the ease of execution with this kind of composition. As you've seen, like, uh, when they tried to go for Sanford, Sanford was able to still pop one Vengeance, so that's one dash. That meant that the uh, angle for the Way of the Dragon was off. And it's not because of Light, it's because of Sanford. Afterwards, he was still able to pop the Fire Slash, force Kusei in there. Not eventually oh. misses the uh, ultimate. Wow, wow, no, 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 no. Oh this Light tried to go for Sanji. Yeah, the no, 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 the is actually very, very scary right now. They can't go near. Light's trying to look for an angle, but because of that, because of all of the time being bought here by Echo, they are going to get him. And this could be bad for Light as well. JP's close by. Oh. With all the theory under the turret. And we are jumping in again. This is so bloody! Oh my oh, goodness, this is Lina! They can't move! They can't move! They're all prisoners here in Echo. All of their members had knock-ups. Only Benny Cutie, well, that's understandable because he's a marksman, but Echo just overloaded RC with oh, so many stuns that okay. as, they, as, soon as, as soon as they group up, there's really no escaping. The like the stream, guys. Thank you. And this is Aqua with Purify. You could say with Purify as well. It doesn't help, man. You can only Purify one or two. It does not matter. And at that point, Echo with a clear lead. And we've seen struggle after struggle from RSG no. trying to get the setups here. Sana, Even for light, no. can't find any setup Sana, with that way the dragon. This choke have just Sana, not paying dividends at all for them in this matchup. Sana, 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 for Echo to play around with. Nearly the 8,000 gold lead. Look at the disparity in the gold lane alone for this matchup here. All right, you have to commend Demon Kite, though. He's catching up on farm, surprisingly. Uh, pretty close to Carl Teasy, but then again, if you are a Nolan, this is kind of expected of you. Can you can't imagine to be in Demon Kite's shoes? Like, you're always thinking, man, how... I cannot even team fight. They're just gonna stun me to death. If I go near someone, I will probably I die. Yep. <laughs> What a dilemma. I One stun connects and uh, it's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, it's just the domino effect. Well, Aqua's moving on to his own internal guard. Let's see what happens here. The defense of the base goes forward. That was a beautiful dive in from Carl Teasy. Look at that again. Purify used by Aqua to run away. But then again, there is just no way for them to fight against this. They're so scared to go near them. Ooh. Here's the final slash though. Echo Boom. just going non-stop team me. fights here. And they know they can handle it. Oh, this is tough. Them. Can they Would hold be. it together? The Lord's gonna be taken oh, care oh, of, oh, though. Yeah, that's gotta be it. With light gone, no one else for can see the okay. front. That will be no, 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 no. with a dominating no, 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 game no, no, It's the Echo Express and the sound of the drums. They sweep the Raiders no, no. in a very strong showing. I gotta say, it's the trap that no, no, no. helped Echo win both games. First one is the usual priority that eventually that Ixia that was eventually the problem. And then this Guinevere. Echo just literally anti-strat RSG. Oh my goodness. They anti-strat them. They, they anti-ed gameplay them. They didn't get a chance really too much because they spent so much time in the air. Oh, that is one of those rare moments where now I, well, I don't want... Can I just step out? I want to play a game. And this feels like a draft that you could have saved for players. Exactly. You know, this is so scary. It's so powerful. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was wondering as we were seeing that kind of unfold. I was like, man, have we seen this specific lineup yet? We haven't, right? Uh, and it just it was executed so well. Of course, you know, RSG they'll have a lot to learn from that specific matchup alone. And uh, it was a very tough game too for them. Game one a lot closer. But man, Echo just pulling something up their sleeve that they had prepared for us. So it was great to see execute well. Uh, this time you can see, obviously, as well, Carl Tizi feeling pretty good about that alongside uh, the rest of the lineup here from Echo, man. It's just on point. Can't wait to really hear what they have to say about this matchup and, again, that lineup. Let's go ahead and throw it over to Mara and Hands on stage with Echo. All right, everybody, let me hear it from you. Echo loud. Congratulations! At tuwan-tuwa sila kanina, nagigil na gigil no? Pagkatapos nila matalo yung kanilang kalaban, no? Okay, but there was one, you know, usual thing na nakita ko, Carl DZ. It was the same thing all throughout. I'm giving you this microphone right now. Kasi hindi nyo lang pinutol ang five-match winning streak ng Echo. Tinalo nyo rin sila 
twice this season. So, meron bang pagbabago or this, is there something going on in your head na, ah, okay, RSG. When you think about RSG, ano ba sila kay Carl DZ? Like, kamusta ba sila as opponents and as competitors? Uh, para sa akin po sila po yung tinaturing namin, ano, parang kryptonite po namin. Kasi sobrang lakas po talaga nila pag kami yung kalaban. Kryptonite? Yung wins po, di naman namin po iniisip eh. Talagang gusto lang po namin bumawi sa dalawang talo pass week. Kryptonite ang dealin niya. This time around, kita namin, ikaw at saka si Benny Q. You guys have played both times this season. Benny, what was the reason behind it? Kasi usually, di ba, nagpapalitan kayo. What was the decision heading forward into this week na, ah, okay, we're gonna be playing Carl TZ and Benny QT for the same games na meron tayo ngayong linggo? Uh, actually, si Boss, si Boss TikTok po talaga yung ano. And kaya, yung reason kaya kami yung magkasabay ni Carl kasi <laughs> alam naman natin na dati pa kami magkasama. And then yung dalawa na magkasama na sila since MDL. Kaya ganun yung naging rotation talaga ng player. So, familiarity in terms of the game. Matagal na magkakakilala and thus, that's the reason why they're the same lineup they have been. Kausapin naman ako. Pupunta ng Indu yan si Carl pag hindi nyo pinalaro ng pinalaro. So, playoff secured na kayo. Pero hindi pa tapos ang bakbakan para sa seeding. So, ano pa dapat ang maasahan namin mula sa Echo? Mas gagalingan pa po namin para makuha po namin yung upper bracket. Mas gagalingan para makuha ang upper bracket. Ang galing niyo na nga eh. At ngayon, ang ating MVP for Game 2, Carl! <laughs> Carl! Okay, ang dami niyong fans dito. Kanina, sigaw Carl. sila ng sigaw para sa inyo. Si ano ang gusto mong sabihin sa lahat ng mga fans niyo at sa mga manonood? Uh, sa mga Echo fans dyan, thank you support. Patuloy niyo lang kami support tayo. Uh, kunin namin upper bracket. Kukunin ang upper bracket! Yan ang pangako ni Carl. Congratulations once again to Echo. You may now take your bow and take your walk of victory. Parang nag nagkahiyaan sila kung sino yung unang magwalk. Oh my, asin nag nag tutulakan pa sila. Tutulakan sila. Kung bakit ko na rin masabi ko ano ba yung dapat ko sabiin. But one thing's for sure. They got RSG's number this season. And you know, sabi ng ani Carl, gusto nang kunin yung upper bracket with what they're showing right now. Hindi malabo na magiging top seed sila. Silipin natin ko ano nga ba ang sabihin ng ating mga casters. Casters, pass up. So now the streaks are gone. Yep. They've they've been depleted here, and I would say that you know we have our teams, of course, that have secured their slots for the playoffs. I can't wait to see that continue to unfold here now. Musta ano ang mga wins trika? That we saw work for this game here, Wolf. Yes. Take us through it. Woo, 100% great job coming up from Carl Tizi. Believe that he played Nolan enough to understand that there will be heroes that are much faster when it comes to farming compared to the Nolan. And Gunnivir is under that category. And as we've seen, he was able to get into the get into a, a early kill or early pull. We can see through the highlights how his pattern was. So this was one of those fights where JP was gunned upon by the way of the dragon, but they took so much time. And Carl TZ was also on point landing the first kill. And look at this. Look at that combo with JP starting it up. The violent requiem right afterwards. Good juggling. Um, If that sounds like a uh, fighting game, Robin, kind of, no, uh, lang si Carl terms that we see there, but definitely that's what we saw from this game. Another one, eh. this Carl Tizi finds more, prompting that Purify onto Aqua. Aqua didn't have a chance to react. And another one, always multiple heroes being caught by the violent Requiem and the stun coming out, the knockup, I mean, from Carl Tizi. And as we've said, look at that. Anybody who gets caught is not going to be going down. It's practically just airborne for the entirety of the skirmish and then aqua being found by sanford great job for him demon kite eventually takes out carl tz this carl tz had no more spells to um, to use and contribute to that but that meant that the entirety of echo just focused on the building base building and i hope that we have some stats like a uh, crowd control time for echo because my oh my that game looked to be uh, looked to be a uh, us uh, A game where if you're be if you're caught by Echo, you just straight up go to sleep. That's literally how it is. And if you're looking at Echo, big stumble on their part. Ten minutes into this game, they already uh, finished it. 
One important factor is that they're also able to contain Kusei in this game. Not only Massive. Demon Kite, but also Kusei. 0 and 2 for this game, not having the farm as well. Look at the gold difference between the two gold daners. That's about two items worth for Ben Cutie. Up with the Endless Battle, Wind Talker, as well as this Malefic Lord to go with the Impure Rage. There's so much damage in the early stages of the game coming out from Ben Cutie that Kusei weren't able to really just catch up and they're also getting denied up top because of the moves that Echo were able to do. And then despite Demon Kite not dying in this game, still had not much of an impact as the Nolan because he cannot go to Echo. There's just so much crowd control on the side of Echo that's difficult to deal with. And then Sanji being the uh, the carry for this game. As we've mentioned and we did predict this to happen, Sanji will be dealing the most damage because there's no one from RSG to force or uh, to be a problem for the Vexana. Technically speaking, there's no one is a problem for Sanji, but because of how much safety there was from Echo between the crowd controls that they have, there was no option for Demon Kai to go for Sanji in this particular game. So when it comes to the damage dealt, he dealt the most damage. 29k looks pretty bad in a way, but this is just a 10 minute game. You have to remember, this is just a 10 minute game. Uh, we've seen uh, from Echo as they finish. And then when it comes to the GPM, undeniable that Benny Cutie was really funneled a lot of resources in this because of the aggression from Sanji as well as Carl TZ and the protection from JP that we saw from this game. Overall, it all went down to Echo being the anti-strat or the anti-meta that we've seen. And we can see through the heatmap how Carl TZ managed to take over the first five minutes of the game, going into the EXP lane, in fact, and not go to the gold lane, just because they know that the Arlet, if it is activated earlier, it meant that the combo will complete. They will have four of their heroes are focused on crowd control that can now be utilized in the first few skirmishes. Yeah, 10 minute game, yeah. I feel like 25% of the time, RSG was in the air. Yes. <laughs> that's, yeah, if there was only much. an airtime uh, counter, right? Yeah. So, uh, again, that's an express game for Echo, and that's why they had that whole Echo Express. So, that wraps up that match, the star match of the day. Now, next ahead of us, we have Blackness International and TNC for match number two. Now, for this, there's still obviously a lot on the line here. TNC still, they've, they've been struggling. We heard even before what they've been going through. The whole yep. shot, shot calling and everything else. Now Blacklist International, we even saw the quotes that have been floating around. You know, they're used to this position that yeah. they're in. And they've been here before. So we'll see if they can continue forward. But we are going to be taking a short break, so sit tight. We'll be back after this. Again, I'm Naisu. This is Rockheart. Wolf, we're going to take a short break ourselves. We'll be back with you guys after this. We'll see you soon. The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at SlashEvent.com. Don't miss any right, MPLPH guys, yeah, action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the
Naglalag ba guys? Naglalag ba? Bihin nyo nga ako naglalag. Chat nyo dito sa live chat guys yung naglalag ha. Para alam ko kung naglalag. Kung nag... Ah, ano yung video. Pero mukhang okay naman eh. Baka ikaw na ang nakaupo doon. Keep natin, supporting eh. RSG El Ganador. And for more MLBB action, keep it here. Only on MPL Philippines. RSG El Ganador? Saan yan? Okay, ano muna natin. Baka ma-copyright tayo ng background guys.
Why delete the comment, bro? <laughs> You're saying MPLPH is boring and you're deleting your comment stand your ground be proud do not go back on your words diba? it's like naruto stand your ground hold up stand proud okay later again guys uh it's a little bit, uh, just five minutes, and then uh, we're good again.
You will narinig mo, may sumigaw sa labas. <laughs> narinig, narinig, narinig natin hanggang dito. Let's Alam go! Alam mo, ang init. Ayun, narinig ulit natin. Ang init ng panahon ngayon. So, meron tayong question of the day. Ano ang inyong paboritong palamig sa mainit na panahon? Ano po? Laman. Chocolate drink. Chocolate drink? Milk ano to? Milk tea. mo ba ng gatas? Wala po. Ano po? Yung kulay green. Yung kulay green? Milk oh. tea. Ano nga ba tong kulay green na to? So, nilalagay mo ba ng yellow or plain lang, malamig na tubig? Paano mo siya iniinom? Ano po? Minsan may yellow, minsan ano, plain lang. Minsan plain, may yellow. Diretso ba to sa baso, <laughs> sa cup, may straw? Ano po? Lahat mo na nabanggit. Lahat, all of the above. <laughs> Parang quiz to ha. All of the above. Masarap yan, chocolate milk na may yellow. Oh, yun. Ikaw naman, oh Heb, ano yung paborito mong palamig? Ako ano, favorite kong palamig is ano, BJ. Buko juice. Buko juice! BJ. <laughs> Buko juice ba to na nasa bote na or yung nasa shell? Yung ah, mga nagtitita sa labas na, na nakatutulak ng palang. Ay, oo, oh, oh, kay kuya. Pero dito. Hmm, laki ako ng buko, 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 buko kasi dati nung nag-aaral pa ako, tuwing uwiyan namin, mabila ako ng buko juice. Ay, ang ganda nun kasi may mga quota si kuya. Parang mga 60 ata bago sila pwedeng umuwi. So okay yun, nasusuportahan mo pa si kuya. Buko juice, ang sarap nun. Sa kabilang panig naman, tignan natin kung ano nga ba ang sasabihin ng TNC. Hans, pasok. Thanks, para This time around, Ooh, nandito tayo sa side ng TNC Pro Team. Layo mo nga ng konti. Kasi para makita yung iba sa ating mga players dito. Uh, no, men, ikaw mo una. Bigyan mo ng top three ng mga bagay or ng mga inumin. Ang paborito mong palamig sa mainit na panahon. Number one. Number one ko, energy drink eh. Energy drink. Bakit energy drink? Ano, routine namin sa TNC yun eh na... Kapag mainit, ganun, or bago mag-start yung game, nag-energy drink okay, kami. Okay, okay. Para ganado, para ganado. Gets. Number two? Number two ko, kape. Kape. Okay. Classic. Sarap Bakit kape. Wala, kape lover ako eh. Okay. So, si, mo, si, sino sa dyan sa mga yan? Sino sa mga teammates mo yung pinakamalakas magkape na feel mo kaya ang labanan sa sa cups of coffee na iniinom kada araw? Si ano? Si Hate. Si Hate. Okay. Palumpalo magkape yan. Hate. Wala na. Ig hindi ko sa akin magkape Siguro hindi ka natutulog. Number three. Kahit mainit, Bigyan nagkakape ako. One last. Yung matcha. Yung matcha. matcha. Very specific. Okay. Ma ice or hot? Meron bang hot? Meron. Meron din meron. Pero mas gusto mo? Yung ice. Yung ice. Yung ice. Sorry, sorry, Hita. Ice daw gusto eh. Bakit ice? Bakit ice? Kasi mainit yung panahon, masarap pag ice. Oo oh, ano man. Oo nga naman. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, ulitin ko lang. Energy drink. Ay, sorry drink, guys. Di ko lang tanggal. Coffee. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Tsaka okay. iced matcha. Sige. Ilatag naman natin doon, banda. Super Yoshi. Kung yun yung mga nabanggit niya, ano naman sa'yo? Bigyan mo ako ng una. Uh, Unang-una, syempre tubig. Okay, tubig. Tubig. Tama. Kasi la, 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 oh, may mga daw, sabi ni... Sorry, sorry. I-specify mo. I-specify mo. Alin ba doon yung gusto? Meron kasi iba-iba eh. Purified. Alkaline. Ano ano pa ba 'yun? Mineral. Min mineral, mineral. mineral. Yung, yung may yung may yellow syempre mainit eh. Yung may? May yellow, mainit yung, ngayon. Ay eh. yung may yellow, mineral na may yellow. Bigyan mo ng dalawa na mabilisan. Winter melon milk tea. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Winter melon milk tea. And last but not the least, Java chip. Java chip. Java chip. Yun. Doon natapos ang boxing. Thank you Nomad. Thank you Super Yoshi. Pero na sa sa mga casters. Casters. Pasok. <laughs> Thank you guys so much and welcome back. What is up, guys? I'm Nice Sue. This is Rock Hard Wolf. And what calms you? Oh, no, what cools you guys down? Nah, yes. Here it is. DJ or Boko Juice. This is a Boko Juice. This is just coconut juice. This is a coconut. It is an actual coconut. Yeah, yeah, it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. I was gonna say, where is Rock Hard? He he does. Yeah, where's your where's your Boko Juice, man? I had my Boko Juice early this morning. Well. One thing's for sure, it's definitely hot yeah. here. It's really and, hot. Uh, now, this is real. This is super real, it, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's not a prop. There's it's actually prop. Bugo juice coming out from there. So <laughs> now let's talk about the headline for this matchup. Of course, what Black and TNC should do. Because before entering this week's matches, both teams Ooh. 
are visibly struggling. It's been hot for them. Yeah. And for Blacklist, they tried to utilize both of their roamers, Haji and Kimpoi. And we can also, in a little bit, we're going to have a video here where Coach Bonchan talks about the difference for these two players here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm sure we also have a lot to say about yeah. the struggles for both these teams. Yeah. I think uh, for Blacklist International, they kind of solved it uh, yesterday. They also mentioned about it. It's like matching the tempo of the other teams that are playing here in MPL PH Season 13. So the meta dictates that they kind of have to play fast and aggressive. And uh, Blacklist International have always been those uh, that kind of team that's not that aggressive. That's why they were able to solve it afterwards. Well, I love that point, Wolf. But let's also, again, hear what Coach Bonchan has to say. Last week, na mentioned mo coach na uh, isa sa challenges ng team is yung shot calling. So, ano lang yung for you as as coach, ano yung major difference ni ni Haji and ni Kimpoy in terms of shot calling? Uh, sa shot calling kasi mas uh, kung sa mechanics, uh, pag si, si Haji siguro masasabi ng si Haji na kakaramang work in sa uh, shot calling pa paano, kahit pa paano, merong uh, Doon nakakaangat si Kim Poy, although uh, kaka-start niya lang mag-practice this week. So, kailangan pa, kailangan pa din talaga namin i-improve. Ano, kailangan namin siyang ihabol. Ako pag shot ko ninyo. Right, so basically, the differences between these two roamers here. One is mechanically edged and one kind of, you know, has a mind for the game. Yeah, uh, shot calling yeah. is also a big thing that you, you could point out from both these teams because yeah. we also heard this is a similar problem for TNC. That's right. And it was actually also Coach Ben Things that uh, talked about this, and we'll hear from that in just a second. But that's a shot calling is such an important part for these teams. And so we heard Coach Bonchan. Now let's hear from Coach Ben Things. Panong magiging direction ng TNC? na alam niyo na yung sagot eh alam niyo na yung gagawin niyo pero nasaan yung ano nasaan yung uh, sorry for the lack of better term yung problema na ano siguro sa shot calling talaga siya eh yung sa shot call kailangan ano eh may isang tao na magi step up tapos na handa siyang magkamali para sa ikabubuti ng team handa handa siyang tumalino sa pagkakamali na yan para experience kasi yun eh. Uh, example, kung si, si Yoshi, kung shot caller namin, tapos yung dumating yung crucial game, hindi siya nakapag-shot call. Kasi, sabi na, example, uh, ayaw niya magkamali, takot siya magkamali, takot siya gumawa ng move. Yun yung, ano eh, yun yung pangit eh. Alam mo yung gagawin, pero wala kang ginawa. Na magiging regret siya eh. Tapos, pag, pag kasi nasanay ka na na ikaw yung nagkocall sa mga crucial game, yung player na kung sino nasanay na nasanay ka na doon sa amin. Pag nasanay ka na kasi sa sa, to, sa trabaho mo na mag-shot call in a, in a crucial game, dun ka tatalino. Kasi dun, dun ka magiging wais pa, pa. Kasi lagi mo naranasan eh. Next time, alam mo na yung gagawin. Ah, okay, next time ito yung gagawin. Kasi pag wala kang ginawang step, kahit alam mo naman yung gagawin, hindi mo ginawa, regret siya. Hindi mo malalaman na Kung tama ba yan, oh, mali. So there we go, hearing from Coach Ben Things. I'm on, I'm and, on ben Things, you know, he's speaking from experience, guys. That's right. Before he was coach, of course, he was roaming for TNC for the longest time. And uh, that's kind of what he's trying to instill on the players right now. So we'll see if both teams fix out their shot calling here for the matchup. Oh, th those are two different things that actually Ben Things talked about. First is about actual shot calling. And second is to not to be afraid to explore and experience some mistakes. Because that's true. That is one thing that you have to kind of really do in the regular season for a long tournament like this for MPL. You have a little bit of a leeway in the regular season to make the mistakes and then learn from it. Well, who do you guys think are going to make less mistakes here, right? So I was going to say. You tune in to our official YouTube streams and comment hashtag black or hashtag TNC with your game and server ID and one of you, or four of you rather, will get a chance to win 500 diamonds. So yeah. maybe that's it, right? It's just about who makes less mistakes here at this point. Yeah. At that point, it is. Uh, and you know we'll have to see because right now we're going to welcome the marshals out to stage once again for the fairness and the integrity of the game here. Of course, we've got Jeff, Chico, Patrick, Wilbert. And how do they cool down? Well, they wear those jackets in the heat. <laughs> As they, and they karate chop, by the way. So let's welcome out the teams as well for this matchup.
Ah, di dapat mag step up kasi ah. Pwede na yung dati niyang lakas na yun. Hello. Hello, Eternal Sunshine. Pang ano yan kung pangalam mo ah. Though the agents find themselves in a familiar situation, glimpses of brilliance and remarkable plays shine through. Will their strategic code and prowess prevail against the Phoenix holding on to their flames? Get ready for its Blacklist International! Blacklist for me. The Phoenix still possesses the opportunity to soar and ignite the flames of victory. Can they reverse their fortunes Black against the agents? Win, guys. Will the strategic moves be executed to secure a win for we the week? Next, Let's next find season. out and give it up next for TNC Pro game. Team! Oh, 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 oh. And their coaches, Coach Dexter and Coach Ben Things. So and PL Arena, we're going to find out will it be TNC <laughs> or Blacklist International? <laughs> and let's Black. take a look at the lineups here. Starting off with match two, we're going to start it off with Blacklist International. The agents are finally waking up here. We've seen them everywhere. We've seen them go crazy in Agent Zero, man. He's 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 definitely back. He's definitely back. Things are they're finding some success, but across from them, a team that has been struggling. But we'll see if they have Come found on, their own success here for this matchup. Take us through it, Wolf. Yeah, it's Nomad, Ryzen, Agent Heads, and Super Yoshi. And with all of the number of uh, games and series that this particular lineup has played, I think it's now safe to assume that this might be the lineup for TNT Pro Team. And now they're going to be facing up against Blacklist International. They did win versus Blacklist International before, but this time it will be different. And I would make a bold claim here. Actually, between Blacklist and TNT in this particular series, whoever wins this will be eliminating the other. Like, not... Not like literally like eliminating uh, the other, but I yeah. think that just because of the point system that we have and uh, the wh whatever is at stake, whoever wins this actually secures the uh, playoff slot. That is a hot take here, mm -hmm. considering, again, we have, what is this, the end of week five. That's right. We're down to the last two weeks. We know that four teams have already secured their slots here, and we know the remaining teams <laughs> are fighting for so much. And like we mentioned in leading into this scene from the videos, shot calling is a big part of it. But let's take a look at the Infinix keys to victory. Oh, what's he doing here? These Edward, teams can go about away. this matchup. Blacklist International. Now it's Insui's time to outrun Ryzen because before it was actually Ryzen that won versus Insui in that class S monsters battle, monster demons. And for TNT, don't see one Legend Zero. He's awake. Oh man, you felt that in the previous series of Blacklist International. And lastly, learn from your past shot calling mistakes. Very evident for the side of TNC that what they need to improve on is their late game shot calling and the way that they push the Lord. There were so many games that TNC lost despite them winning in the first 12 minutes of the game. All they need to do now is to end up, uh, end the game much as systematic maybe yeah. or I guess for lack of a better term, cleaner. Yeah, they have to. Uh, again, when you really watch TNC's games, not just this season, but even previous seasons, it's always something that we kind of pointed out here on the Caster Desk. Where we were like, you know, there's a lot of brilliance from TNC's lineups even before, but for some reason, 
there was always this struggle to cap out games, to end them. And that deals with the whole shot calling premise, right? For the most part. And Ben Things, Coach Ben Things, is the best person to talk about that because coming from where he was in that Rome position to where now he's the coach here, this is something that he clearly sees and that he clearly experienced. And for TNC going against Blacklist International, a team that has many accolades in history and everything else, they have been very vocal in the situation that they're in, but also, again, shot calling being a thing. So it's really come down to, with this matchup alone, and now that we're rounding out week five here, it's who has fixed that shot calling problem? You know, how do they approach that shot calling problem that they've maybe had? Can they learn from their mistakes quick enough to adjust to themselves where, like the hot take Wolf mentioned, yeah. one of these teams that wins here, it's going to be crucial in the weeks to come, especially with the way the, sim the point system works right now. So we'll find out, but also we want to go ahead and mention everybody watching to come and join us also on TikTok. We've got a great goodie bag lottery for you guys and be one of the lucky winners here. Yeah, just open your TikTok app, go to the MPL Philippines TikTok channel, that's at MPLPH underscore official, and click on the live stream, right? Once you're there, on the top left corner, click. Just top left. Yeah. Touch that. There it is. If you don't click it, right, you touch it. You touch that top left corner, there's a bag there before the base breaks. You know what would be great? Maybe if one of us here on the desk actually opened up our TikTok app. Okay. And try we to get the link. We, we like, I want to, right? I want to. But we're, we're working, so you guys do it. Oh, come <laughs> on. But we do see your guys' comments, of course, as well. So, again, let us know because Speaking like Rockheart yeah, like Rock mentioned earlier, don't forget those watching on YouTube, there's a separate giveaway for you guys, 500 diamonds for four winners. Let us know with the hashtags, of course, either hashtag TNC, hashtag Black here, BLCK, alongside your user ID and server ID. Now, we're waiting for the draft here. And what we saw yesterday, well, going back to the key to victory, yeah. Legend Zero is awake. Yeah. Uh, and this is why I always like to say, man, the XP lane, one of the most impactful roles, you know, for, th for any team, really. And I know we're taking a look at head-to-head -head here in the jungle since Sui and Ryzen, but Legend Zero is going to be a big part of this for Blacklist International. A lot of people spoke how much uh, he has to do in some of these games. And although we have painted the picture for the junglers being matched up here, I still think this comes down to how do you control? If you're TNC, yeah. how do we control Legend Zero? How do we control Edward? And if you're Blacklist International, how do we let Edward shine? You know, how do we roll around with that? I think it may, might start with the draft for sure. Um, kind of force the, that matchup to at least be favorable for TNC. So what that entails is maybe we can just sit back and wait for the EXP laners to be picked last. Or pick it when you already know your lane matchup, for example. So um, expect that there will be some flexes for both uh, TNC as well as um, the side of uh, Blacklist International, maybe Arlot and Ruby will be the priority so that they can be flexed in, uh, two, uh, in two roles. Then eventually for TNC, what they need to do is to identify first what has been picked up for Edward and then kind of counter it or at least, you know, uh, win the, the lane matchup first. It's very difficult to contain Edward. We know that for sure, especially an Edward that's awake, right? So they really need to control that, uh, that part. I really like where TNC is right now because yesterday they did face off against, you know, the, just the world champions. You know, yeah. No biggie. Um, and I think from there, you probably are in a good position. Like, your your hands are probably still yeah. yeah. Remember, too, as we take a look at the highlights here, TNC got their first points of the season. I know it feels yeah. a while ago, but they got their first points against Blacklist International. You know, but after their win against Manane last night, Blacklist International, are they going to be able to bounce back and continue some of the momentum that we've seen them garner uh, up to this point? But, you know, it, it makes you wonder, like, what was TNC doing that worked here for them back then? Uh, I think they closed one. out earlier. Yeah. But they, they're, they're seeing, they're, we are also seeing some uh, uh, problems with their Lord Bush, like this one, right? Uh, eventually, they will... Uh, they will lose some of their early game prowess. And then one thing that also went in favor of TNC heavily in this uh, particular series was the Retri battle that Ryzen um, was able to win. And if you recall, we were hyping up how good the Retribution is for Sensui, Sensui right? The Sensui yeah. instincts. But when they faced up against Ryzen, their namesake kind of tells us that it will eventually be Ryzen. Actually, Sensui in lore-wise yeah. defeated Ryzen, right? So, yeah, that didn't happen. But... What I'm saying here is that Retribution was also important in that particular series.
Yeah, especially right now where obviously there are big questions being thrown around in regards to shot calling. It's not always about like who gets the last retreat first. Uh, or who, who gets the last retreat, but how the team fights after it, right? Yeah. Like, who's gonna decide, do we fight? Do we keep going? Do we take these fight? Do we take them kills? Or do we completely back off? Like, yeah. there's a big problem, there's a big difference, right? Yeah. Which is what, something we saw in the first series, where they didn't even notice the turtle. There was like, Echo completely like, focused on turtle, and then it was like, RSG, let's go yeah. kill him, everyone. Yeah. So That's what I feel like with, the, I guess, the play style. Even when TNC kind of changes yeah. some of the roster or they, they mix things up, their play style is literally like a phoenix. Like, they're on fire at moments, but then sometimes maybe that fire gets too hot yeah. and the flames get distinguished, right? And that's something that teams have really kind of found out in playing against TNC. And I think that's why really when you come down to it, it's all about uh, that shot calling, fixing that, because yeah. that's what it is. And when it comes down to these objectives, it's, it's it sounds so simple, you know, when you hear it, like, oh yeah, it's just shot calling. But obviously when you're dealing with it in the actual game, it's, it can get quite extensive depending on how things fall in place. Like we saw from the highlight there where they were pushing with the Lord, but then unfortunately a bad call, yeah. you learn from it. That's what even Coach Ben Things mentioned. Like you regret it a little bit, but ultimately it's a lesson. You know, it's how you kind of adjust from that and work from that. And so go, go. given this whole thing, we have to see if TNC especially has fixed and learned from the past Four plus weeks at this point. So let's jump into the draft here. Game number one. TNC will be on that blue side. That is a tough win rate on the blue side. Zero percent. Zero percent. We can only go up from here. Yes. Okay. Well, very good. This is actually a good floor to start with, right? The ceiling is very far away. It's a good floor because from here, you can really do no wrong. I really like what's happening on the YouTube comments, by the way, where one of them is saying, what Fia Sin says the match was pretty experimental. Yeah. They think the uh, teams were actually in an experimental phase back then. I kind of do agree. Um, but this time around, I think we should be done by that. So yeah, this draft should be cool. Yeah, Fredrin is the priority here for Blacklist and the Fairmiss. <laughs> Classic combo. I believe the TNT might just go for a Vexana in this, uh, in this case, or a Valentina. Uh, heroes that, re that Hatred really likes. And uh, um, Export looks good, actually, for TNT. Yeah. Eventually. Heads is also... He looks really good with that Export yeah, exactly. in the previous series. Yeah. So this time Mino Claude. Mino Claude looks really good for TNT when as well. Oh, a Benedetta, Benedetta early on! Super early Benedetta. Benedetta. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. That's Whoa. early. Okay, Blacklist knows how to solve this. What they can do now is pick up uh, Carrie maybe? Or Roger. Carrie or Roger? Carrie or Roger, good. yeah. Roger, Arlet yeah. also is available, by the way, so Roger, that's also man. scary. Arlet Fredrin. No, no, he's... Uh, oh, he's banned. Yeah, they yeah, decided yeah. to ban him out, so he's taken out of there. Okay. Low Yi? <laughs> Just kidding. Roger. It's also banned first. Yeah, it's also banned already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, at that point, really, like I was saying, for, if you're in TNC shoes here, you know that <laughs> things are kind of dire yeah. in terms of points <laughs> and what you need. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess that always leaves the question, like, do we go to our really comfort picks and trying to execute there. But then again, the question is like, what is the most comfortable for TNC? A lot of the times they work so well in the early game, they usually get a lead, but then things kind of fall apart. I think the fact that you have a Barrett and a Minotaur work great for, okay, we can at least, we can fix some of the mistakes we might make in game, but our setup potential is great. They also took that Benedetta, so they have that available, but Given the fact that that was such an early pickup, you know, is that troublesome here for TNC mm -hmm. against Edward as we take a look yeah. at his career hero spotlight? The, the the stats he had for all of this, the Benedetta just speaks volumes. I yeah. think that's, really, that's one of the good, the very, very few moments where it's good to early pick the Benedetta if you're against a very specific Benedetta yes. player, right? Yeah, and this uh, are the stats from season seven anyways, when he started to play. Really on that EXP lane or quote got the off lane before when the EXP lane wasn't yeah. <laughs> wasn't a thing. Haji you know? He's playing uh, Haji Benedetta Haji so Haji much, Haji and Haji it's a deny Haji pick Haji for Haji sure. Haji. However, it's true. Um, there uh, there's some merit to kind of reserve that EXP lane. But now look at this: the immediate answer for Blacklist, pick up the Paquito, right? Sure. Yeah. And then now they My ban heart. both the Violet and the Vexana, two of the heroes that I mentioned right for away. TNC. Love it. Uh, Lovely for Blacklist, wow. gonna hail it for TNC for sure, I mean, because yeah. now you're gonna be left with what? For 
for Mr. Hatred. Aurora, perhaps? I don't mind that. No. Actually, you know what? The Aurora game that Hatred played was really, yeah, good, was really right? good, right? The previous Aurora game he had, it's just the follow-up. Again, yep. it all revolves around that shot calling. It yeah. was very problematic, and they Ooh. agree, and they admitted that. He's one of the only players that actually brought the Aurora That's to, right. to, to play, actually. So, yeah. um, again, we'll see if they actually go that route. There's still some options available for them, but really good banning uh, on yep. both sides. And I was actually rejoicing. I know we see the chip banned out now, but I was actually happy to see it this week. Yeah. You know, come <laughs> through finally. That was um, fun. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. And was you fun. even heard the uh, player sentiments. I think it was Carl Teasy that mentioned, like, yeah, they don't right. like playing against it. Like, yeah. it's it's kind of annoying, right? It's because annoying. all of a sudden, boom, you have this whole uh, squad of team joining the fight. So now that yeah. that's taken out, Tiger. where does this leave us? <laughs> um, Tiger. Oh, Claude, they, they snatched the Claude very nice. Yeah. Coming up from Blacklist now for Told TNT. You. Oh man, I agree. this is difficult because Claude would have been the hero that deals with the Theramis, but they don't have that anymore. And then uh, obviously of the Benedetta, so I think you're left with what Aurora, maybe Gord. Gord, yeah. Yep. Or, or yeah, I think I'm thinking uh, X X yeah against the Claude that if, and Paquito. If the Gord gets picked up, the uh, the theory <laughs> is true. Yeah. I think you're left with Harith, actually, for TNC. Uh, Got no choice. Harith is pretty good here, actually. Yeah. It, it actually might do more, because you want more AoE damage. Yeah. So Bruno. 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 What's going in the mid lane here, TNC? Aurora or Gord. All right. No Varya. Okay. How do we forget? How do we forget? To be fair, it, you know what? A lot of drafts, no Varya yeah. has been completely snubbed. It's weird, right? Yeah, <laughs> the past week. <laughs> yeah. She's just kind of, it's not even that she's fallen off. It's just, I think some teams really like to go, you yeah. know, for that Vexana being available, the Valentine obviously, uh, changes some of the dynamic, but this actually works great for the lineup, at least that they have drafted yeah. for TNC. Okay, so uh, Tigreal is uh, pretty normal for Haji to make a Cho as well. Not be surprised if this is something like a Natalia, you know? But this well. is different, Florin, all right. Yep, and that's uh, the sustain that we're looking at. And actually, this looks like a very sturdy lineup from the side of Blackness International. And just picking up the Bruno, uh, I understand why TNC did that because they had yeah. really no choice. I think I really like that fourth big cloud coming up from Blacklist because yeah. that is definitely what TNC was eyeing to go for. And the Bruno is more like a, a band-aid solution to many problems that are, uh, that are presented by Blacklist. So man, this is a really good draft for Blacklist. Uh, Band-Aid Solutions, it's kind of like the new work hours. Anyway, let us know <laughs> what you guys think oh. here for the lineups, TNC and Blacklist International. Which lineup you're feeling more? And don't forget to join the giveaway if you're on YouTube yep. and TikTok. Let us know what you're thinking on YouTube. 500 diamonds for four winners. You can let us know with the hashtags of BLCK for Blacklist or hashtag TNC alongside your user IDs and user server numbers. And good luck. Now we're going to jump into the land of dawn here. It's game number one for match two. Blacklist International and TNC. Now as we get adjusted, we're going to have to take a look real quick also at the emblems. This is more, I know you said the lineup. I, I don't know if you were saying you liked Blacklist International's lineup more, no. Wolf. Yeah, I did. I did say. But why, like, why is that? Is TNC going to struggle against this lineup? Um, maybe because um, I'm saying that because there's not a lot of like confirmed kills for TNC. Like, surely the Novaria can just shut down from long distance, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. But imagine the Farmer's ultimate. Imagine the Florin ultimate that eventually they can uh, heal each other up. And this is a Fredrin that Fredrin Farm. This is a good combo as well. There's no actual cleaner or sweeper for TNC to finish the job. They can deal the damage, but I'm not seeing any finisher for them in the latter portions of the game. Early game though, they're. The Bruno, as well as the Minotaur with the Benedetta. That's a pretty strong early game, actually. Yeah, basically the chip damage being done by Hatred can easily be healed up yep. or, or, you know, used w with the Netherrealm. Yep, and there's a lot of dive versus Novaria. That's why I thought that it was uh, surprising Bruno. that the Novaria was the pick. Because there's Paquito, there's the Claude with the, this time a sprint, interestingly. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not going to be afraid of diving because he has a... A Faramis and as well as a Florin. So he can actually get to the back lines and just uh, look for the Novaria. Okay, well, let's look at this because early game and what we've seen before where TNC does often sometimes control 
that early game. And when they can, it works great in their favor, but this time around, given the lineups here, Blacklist International might be able to control this if they can. But really what it comes down to when you watch these games before is TNC on this first objective. Can they go ahead, secure it for themselves, start this up? Remember even before, weeks ago, it was all about Sensui's Ultra Instinct. Yeah. The guy was known for, oh, oh okay. heads. Look at that, heads doing work here on the Benedetta. Oh, Completely caught Haji out by surprise here for first blood. It oh. looks still really good. We still have some knockups here coming in from oh. the Noah Fury, and there you go. The follow-up coming in from this Benedetta is insane. And now even the Nether Realm could not be as problematic. Oh. He's gonna be able okay. to walk out of there. The moves. What a swap. What do you call that? The bait and switch. The bait and switch, the, bait the moves and, and grooves, baby. Hence, yeah. on a roll. Yeah. On a roll, definitely. But I still have to credit it to Hatred. I mean, uh, he landed the, the Star Shatter onto Haji. And actually took him so low, it was heads to finish him off with, by the way, oh. the lethal ignition. And wow. Okay, Hatred's feeling it. <laughs> and Hatred's feeling it. Heads, with that, with that lead now that Heads has on this uh, Benedetta, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work great for the lineup, the lineup matchup, the lane matchup there yeah, in the really lane. Well, work around that and hopefully play around the map with it too. Even though they trade here, both junglers, Super Yoshi there, of course. You're seeing things kind of already fall into place, especially, yeah. let's look at the XP lane here. Itemwise, nothing too big picked up just yet, but on the path there. Right now, obviously, there is going to be a lot. You know what, TNC's just showing that they can team fight, right? That's what they're trying to flex right now, just to make sure that Blacklist does not get the confidence to go ahead and fight. Right now, though, the engagement is pretty good, but obviously, there's no one to follow it up. Yeah. Now the question is, when is Follow it time to go? Hate, hate again, uh, be, I mean, they're going to go and work on that gold, get it there Follow on Nomad. TNC right now, this is exactly what I was talking about early game, where they have this lead. Let's see if they can maintain it this time. Yeah. And that's where you have Follow to pay attention. Pro, if you guys are watching this, you haven't watched so much of TNC, you have to see, check their shot calling. Does it look like they've fixed it? Do they look like they've learned? Right Let's now, see. so far, at this point in the game, they're doing a great job here working together as a team with the lineup they have. And that is the first turret going down here in the bottom side. It's the top lane. Good defense from Heads. Keeping his, himself up. Okay, that's the Petrified. Oh, like oh, the like final blow. It's creating a zone. Oh, the way around the oh, here. And he's, he's probably going to go down here. That is a very spicy Benedetta being shown by Heads today. Oh. Woo. Head turner for sure. This, not every day you see Edward. Lose against his signature hero as well in a 1v1 scenario. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's Edward Balboa, man. Exactly. <laughs> that's saying something. I, right now, with all this farm blaze, man, TNC is on fire in the early game. Yeah. And with Heads, so Heads having this lead 3 0 on the Benedetta. We've seen this before, even in the hands of Edward, where yeah. he has been playing that Benedetta. And with this lead, you know how much of an impact now that Heads can have for this. Yeah. Real quick though, how are the items looking here, Wolf? Okay, so because of the massive lead that TNT have built up, that meant that they will have the Hask Loss now available for Nomad. You can see the priority for him. Going for items that with maximum impact, with just low... Wow. Uh, okay, that's interesting. That was interesting. I think he got caught by energy eruption and yep. he couldn't walk out. Yeah. Exactly, the chain stuns were there. Chain Anyways, stun. yeah, it's just a uh, Nomad focus on maximum value from the items that you get with low price. So that made Legion Sword has lost. Um, has lost is not that much of a priority now for the Bruno, but Nomad felt like, okay, let's take advantage of the early game and let's uh, try to finish this off as early as possible. These turrets don't stand a chance against Nomad, man. Look yeah. at that. They're cleaning up. Well, remember, Bruno is known as like the turret destroyer. Like he's That's one of them. True. Just picks up the Berserker's Fury here too. He's got the two items in. Really, a lot of times, that's what a Bruno needs. He needs that yeah. Hoskins, the Berserker's Fury, and he's pretty much good to go. Yeah. Now, like the BOD next, yeah, probably going that Bruno's, route. Yeah. Super Yoshi also picking up the flask here. So TNC in a good position for these next couple objective fights, these next skirmishes here. Yeah. One, wondering where do they pay attention to next? It looks like it's the top lane to get that tier one down here. Yeah. You're getting uh, so much damage on Nomad now, Berserkers here. That's a Whew. thousand gold lead. Look at those crits, man. 
It hurts. And still again, outplaying 2v1 right now for Black is Ohab. He's really, really mad. He wants to get some work done here against Heads. He does have some healing available from Haji, but doesn't have the ultimate. So I think they might have to save this up. Heads 1v4 right now on the bottom side of the map. He's trying to be as slippery as he can. Playing so much time for no man here on the top side. That's four members of Blacklist being used to basically deal with a single Benedetta. Yeah. Unfortunately for Blacklist International, there wasn't enough damage. It was just seven minutes in. They will not lose their second turn, but that's a, like, that's a lot of time that the Benedetta was able to buy. Eventually, Nomad will take care of business up top. Look at that. Nothing Edward can do about this. Oh, man. Wow. What great plays. Still, you know, the fact that there was not enough time for that to happen. You're now wondering, okay, where does Blacklist International start to find some, some wins on the map here? Because right now they're struggling. Both Tier 2 turrets down on the top and bottom yeah. side is going to make things a little bit hard for them in dealing with these Lord dances that are going to come for up sure. here. Gold difference as well, you see it starting to build up. Of course, we already talked about it, especially in that gold lane. Nomad has just been having a hell of a time. Oh, oh, oh. Edward. Oh. He's got to get out of there. That's a so. huge Ooh. delay. Huge delay from Hatred. Yeah. And that also meant that they will defend bottom lane and might be able to push in the mid as well. <laughs> That's a compounding result of small moves that Hatred was doing. Oh, okay. As long as this hit, uh, these Star Shatters hit, man. Yeah. Oh my goodness, the amount of impact that's coming from mid. You can feel it all across the map. Yeah. Retribution battle, who gets it? It's actually Sensui forced to pop the Retri. Well, Ryzen didn't have the Retribution anyway, so it's be okay. Now, okay. Blacklist International are starting to get the items. Oracle on Sensui and then Flask. For yeah. Haji. Why not? Why not? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Shout out to our good friend, four man Astral Echo. Yeah. Five man, sorry, it's supposed to be a five man. Five man. Not impressive. Not, <laughs> not that impressive. But so close, but yeah, no. Here's the thing what, what can happen is Blacklist is just holding on as yeah. best they can to that tier one turret because yes. that's actually a crucial piece in this Lord Ouch. dance. But you, he feels it. Ouch. He feels yeah, the yeah. damage. Oh. Oh. There you go. There it is. There is a five-man Astro. No, four-man Astro. Yeah, it's four-man. Edward's on the bottom side. Either way, look at oh these hits. God. Look at these hits. Haji can't breathe, man. He's always low. Oh, hatred. He's on fire. Woke up at the right side of the bed. Maybe drank his favorite coffee. <laughs> and said, okay, I'm not playing Novaria. Nobody's playing Novaria nowadays. I'm going to show you why it's good. Oh, and like that. They get the Lord here. Uncontested. TNC. I don't know, man. This is probably one of the better leads that they've had throughout the regular season. Yeah. And this is once again where it comes down to it. Yeah. They have this kind of lead. They have the Lord now going to be marching in with them shortly. Yep. Can they play around this? Can they find <sighs> okay. the possible things to line up for a win here? Yep. If, you've, if you have been a fan of TNC, this is where madness usually starts. Yes. This, is the real, this is the real game for TNC. Have they learned enough from the past four weeks? Let's see, cast count 43, hit count 16. You know, you asked a good question about this, uh, I think it was yesterday, or maybe Friday, Rockheart. Mm. Does this count just hero hits? Or is it also just every shot think, being thrown out? I think these are he these Hater. counts everything, right? Because I, I wow. believe, I, it's unfair, you know, I, I really am not a fan of like the counter for Star Shatter because sometimes you need to just use it to clear the, the waves. Yep, and I right think that's now. what they're trying to do right now though. Star Shatter is hitting everyone from Blacklist oh. right now. Sensui can barely keep up. His health bars can barely keep up with the amount of damage coming from TNC right now. Yeah. Okay, so this is really good for TNC. They've eliminated all the other turrets. Let's see if they can get a push cleanly. He's gonna go for it. We're waiting okay. for Oheb to make something, to, to make a all move right. here. <laughs> So that Edward. <laughs> Character development for TNC. Nobody died in their oh! first Lord push. Let's go. That's a good observation. <laughs> That's a good observation. Ooh, man. It, no one died. No one died. And that's what I'm saying. That is shot calling. That is apparent. Like, if you guys missed the early videos, that's what we're talking about it. There's the damage Rockheart was mentioning. But that's the thing. TNC, it's all about that shot calling discipline. And right now, with the lead that they have, Big key items being picked up oh. here. See you right there. Blacklist International, what can what can they do yeah, they with this lead? I have to wait for their timing. Um, maybe another tanky oh. item for Sensui so that he can frontline. 
Then the, the items obviously from Ed, from uh, Oheb. It's a very important oh, one too. Supply. This time Nomad gets the purple. Extra farm. Oh, look at that. Lightning truncheon prox coming up from H and then now the glowing one. Oh, that's gonna hurt. This game is becoming more crucial it's... on the shoulders of oh Edward right now. Oh my god. Who is even... That was just two slashes. Yep. What the heck? Lag, That's bro. what I'm saying. At this point, if you're watching this again, you really have to just kind of consider the fact, all right, what's Blacklist International going to do? Honestly, it's just buy time. Yep. They have to stall out for maybe another five plus minutes here to kind of even out the economy, even out right. the uh, itemization that Ooh. they're working against. And that's a big part of it, right? They have a Florin. That's great. We've seen great things from Florin in other past okay. series, other past teams okay, we'll use it. Pop up there. Right now, they have to deal with the amount of damage that's being yeah, thrown at them from out. TNC <laughs> with this lead. Internationally, Florin has been a big hitter. You know, not just us, yep. but everyone else. Hello, na yeah. eh. So, uh, uh, Lord Steel oh. can... Okay. Oh, that could be that could be problematic here for TNC, but of course, Blacklist don't really have that much confidence to fight just yet. Again, waiting for the spikes of Oheb, maybe. Wow, but so look, chewy. speaking of spikes, oh my goodness, the damage from Nomad is unreal. Yeah. I don't even think, yeah. Th again, this might be a little too risky here for Black International to do anything, unless it comes down to Sensui's Ultra Instinct, they might go for it. Who's shot calling? What's going to come out on top here? Oheb Oy. was in trouble there for a bit, but then again, Bloom coming in from. Oh, oh no, Nomad, my goodness. Nomad. Nomad. Oh. He's going to go. He's going to go oh, here. Oh, God. God. He's going with crazy. He's hunting down each and every one of these Blacklist members. Oh, you is alive now because of the passive, but Sensui ain't gonna happen. What a disaster for the agents. Two members for Blacklist International left alive. TNC going for it. They want to go for it. This could be and the boom. No, no oh, more the minions. minions. No minions. What are you doing, TNC? Oh, TNC. Here they come, Do the they wave comes through. They have time, Tetsuwi's 20 seconds, Edward's gone as well. Oh my goodness, it's all good pandemonium right now happening inside the base. <laughs> Yue sacrificing himself, absorbing these balls. Coming Ooh. in from Nomad just oh, to defend. Now that's a mistake for sure because they have lost their jungler. This means that Blacklist can make a play for the Lord yeah. actually. 20 seconds. Oh, do you think they'll go for it? Even 5,000 behind. Junglers now up for Blacklist International, but Ryzen still 15 seconds away here. So TNC has to stall this out. They have to keep this from happening. Oh, man. That's a but question. Look at, this. look at heads. Can yeah. he, will Blacklist decide this? Look at heads in the back. Oh, no. Again, everyone spotted out by the yeah, Astral yeah, Echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, oh, my goodness. Oh, it could be oh, it. Oh, but yeah, heads, he's going to have to back oh, off here. Oh, nice save. Oh, oh, oh. These. These crits coming from Nomad, oh like, unreal. Hatred. Right. Could get one. For a shot. Could going get for one from UM, maybe? No, no it's not gonna, it. not gonna be in range. But they mm. got... They got they more. Second, they they got more. Second, skill, eh. Scary Come stuff on, for TNC pay. because... Uh, okay, that dive on the base, definitely not character development. That could have been bad. Could have been bad. Yeah, exactly. Fortunately for them, they have oh. so much oh. of a lead. My goodness, Edward Massive looked like bubble. he could have caught Nomad there for a second, but look at this, Heads, he's here to answer. Maybe <laughs> add some more pressure. Coming in from TNC, five man up on mid. Said so he's gonna be up soon as well. He's up now. Can they defend this? Here they go, they gotta deal with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, Lord's up there, and of course, the Turret gonna be taken down on the bottom. Oh. It's a very clean base here, Super Yoshi with the Benoit Fury. But Sensui going straight Oy. for the damage the healers. Doesn't have really the enough the firepower to back it up. And oh, now it's going to be half HP right now for Nomad. Oh. Oheb finally getting a kill on the board oh. here. Oh. And could oh. get more oh. as we are seeing this Claude tear it up. Blacklist finally signs of life. Oh. TNC! What's happening? They cannot end the game yeah. even with the lead. That's definitely going to have to credit it to Sensui. Because after Super Yoshi dove, Onto Blacklist International, caught many members of Blacklist. What he did was to block the follow up. So he sacrificed himself actually with the Paramus ult and the Bloom available. We talked about how since we can be very tanky in this case. And he was the one to block off the eventual damage coming out from TNC. Let's look at the replay this time. That was a worthy sacrifice. Worthy sacrifice. Look at the jump from Super Yoshi, but Sensui manning the front lines. No mid in trouble. When that happened, didn't have the wind of nature anymore. Perfect timing for Oheb to actually pop off. If, um, with the BMI up as well. 
I guess so that's perfect timing for Blacklist International's hey, members. Oh, oh, what is happening? Wow. There are people wondering, TNC, what what happened there in that match? Again, that defense for Blacklist International. Yeah. And this is the compounding effect that we talked about even beforehand. Yeah. And really, when it comes down to this, it, given how that whole sequence went here, Wolf, Yes, TNC has this little bit of lead. They have the map lead as well. Mm -hmm. You have to consider that, that all base turrets are down for Blacklist International. Yep. So is Blacklist International in a good position to contest the next Lord in 30 seconds? Yeah, for sure. Do we see them want to fight that? And then again, does TNC go and put heads on pressure in one of the side lanes, or does he join that fight? Because look at the real-time win rate here, 69%. Nice. Yeah. Nice for TNC, but look at that. What's yeah. happened in the previous minutes? Yeah. So to answer your question, I think uh, Blacklist International ah. can contest because they can team fight now. Pain, no? 17 minutes, so um, Oheb is locked up. And Setsui is almost uh, in an impenetrable wall at this point because of the Faramis ultimate. And um, they also have dive. So it's going to be up to the Lord Dance, but not the actual Lord Dance, the Lord Dance that's happening outside of it. So. The lane control. Pre-Lord Dance. The pre-Lord Lord Dance. Dance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the 1v1s that's happening between the XP laners. Look at the nice minion wave for Blacklist up top. Mm -hmm. There's one extra minion up there, so that means it's a slow push. Yep. And then the bottom lane being pushed by TNT. See how they handle this again. Half health. Both teams still trying to kind of feel out the situation here. Head's going to make his way down that mid lane. Mm. Keeping that wave in control yep. here. Huh. Shows himself. That's a yeah. Lord evolving now. Okay, the reset comes through. 18 minute Lord. Right. It, also, it almost have, has to boil down to the spiciness of our XP laners, right? Yep. Their fights, their 1v1s, are like literal anime fights yes. again. Just someone could die in one instant. But look at this. Interesting position from Heads. Yeah, he's he is, there. He wants to finish this, <laughs> yeah. but Ed, oh, look at this. Edward Balboa. Edward knows. Facing Edward knows. the challenge, yeah, obviously. Done. 4v4 right now around the Lord Pit. 1v1 on top for our XP laners. That's a, a nice idea, Carmelo, from Hits, because that means that you manage two lanes of minions as they just spawn. Okay. They might go for a play to Edward. Oh, 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 Edward. Could be it. He has a flicker. He doesn't have flicker anymore. Oh, but immortality bought some seconds here. But oh, have, he's gonna have to do this on his own. <laughs> One v three. He was oh, close by, but it was a little bit too late here. Oh, and there you go. Oh, no. The goal later for Blacklist International, and the XP later has fallen. Oh. That could be all it Lewis takes alive for again. TNC to get into this. <laughs> and there you go, the triple for Nomad. Make that a maniac. Will it be a savage? Oh, yes! Nomad ending on the savage. Yeah. And TNC will recalibrate and win game yeah, one yeah, there. OK. <laughs> Can I just say that has been the best Bruno performance that I've seen in quite a long time, especially after all of the nerfs onto Bruno. My goodness, yeah. Nomad uh, saved TNC and won it for them. He took it, man. Can I just say, shot call. Shot call. That was shot a call. good call there <laughs> the to today. make that shot play call. on Edward. After we said, hey, Edward knows what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. The we, call came I, through. I need this. I need this. <laughs> uh, after that match. Got to cool so, off. Personal MVP, I think, in that game will, should be Hatred. Okay, yeah, that I agree. That would not have been possible. Nomad would not have been able to reach that power spike without the hits of no of hatred making sure that blacklist is always retreating backing yep. off i can yeah between between nomad and, and hatred, heads, it's very obviously. difficult to to kind of choose who is the mvp it, i guess I they think, will it's got to be nomad that savage though that's, that's savage. Gonna change. because of the way that he yep. des de designed that oh man nomad is that our first savage of the season? that is the first savage first savage dude this guy it's weird because <laughs> I'm gonna show you a message, dude. A few days ago, he asked for t tips. For me. <laughs> dude, he didn't no, need it. He, he didn't need it, dude. What? The? Okay, eight, one, and four. What did, what did he say? Like he asked for tips. That's basically. Hey, Wolf, can I have tips? Yeah. How, how the gold? Yeah, but no, but <laughs> whatever I said is not related to <laughs> what related. he asked for. That he didn't even need anything. You know what you should do now? What you should, should have I do? A picture now? of this okay. and a savage. Yes. The savage. The savage. But then again, um, you have to credit Blacklist International for 
um, again, prolonging the game so much. And this is a, this is just one of the first few times that he is, his performance is MVP esque. Like, look at that uh, takedown from Hatred. And now Super Yoshi and the gang. Um, for the team, for the side of TNT, this is a change up when it comes to their shot calling in the. Lord Dance, where this time they focus on heroes instead. Sensui's heroics and then Oheb's brilliance once again with this Claude. Um, typically, the Minotaur is a counter to the Claude, but this time Oheb just have uh, the right tools to deal with this. And now, in comes Nomad. Watch for it once again. The Savage takes out Edward. And how about that Flicker? So he w goes up in front of Oheb, pops the Wind of Nature after the Wind of Nature was popped. And look at that mm. Flicker. The timing was there, and he still has the uh, ultimate for now. Doesn't even need it. Because of how much damage he's dealing anyways. And look at his, the way that he dodges. Look at that also, the target um, selection. But he went for the right uh, targets to go for. Completes the Savage, and wins it for the side of TNC. He basically did exactly the opposite of what my teammates in rank do, which is just whoever's in front. Yeah. He, he did the uh, hero select hero targeting thing. Hero yeah, lock. yeah. The hero lock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what shout out a... To my rank game shout, shout out to all the rank game partners out there. Yep. Uh, again, it was... You almost... You're kind of holding your breath, man. Yeah. You know, because you're like, oh, he no. Showed, he showed I showed the message. A message. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you leave him on red? No, I, uh, I, I, <laughs> called? I called him, yeah, oh. basically. Oh, good yeah. guy. Good yeah. guy. Yeah. I you left him on red. <laughs> I, don't, I don't give tips through, through chat, dude. <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult, right? Yeah. Well, that's true. That's actually but true. But like, like I said, it's besides the void, dude. The, um, no matter what happened, this was the, the, definitely TNT's own making. Um, we know for sure that at the start of the season, we already can see a lot of improvements from the team. It's just their shot calling. It's just their, the way that they end the games that they weren't able to, um, to close out on. But apart from that, everybody from TNC just played so well in this game. And so is Blacklist. I will not say that this was a one-sided affair, but TNC really had a certain rotation and certain trust on this kind of composition, which we both doubted. I mean, I'm, I myself mentioned that this is Blacklist's game, that it was easy. I doubted this Bruno pick. Um, the Novaria, obviously, we have not seen it being successful, especially against a Faramis that usually wins versus Novaria because you don't have a way to execute people, you don't have a way to sweep. Turns out Nomad doesn't need it. Nomad <laughs> can make the sweeps on his own. 122,000 damage dealt. And the only reason why his GPM is not on the 800 mark is that TNC just grouped up together as soon as they can, going in for the... Casual Legion Swords as well as a Haskells for no mid that eventually was a problem for Blacklist International. Now you're feeling really good. Uh, apart from that, Ryzen played this well. I, I gotta say, like uh, um, the way that he managed to supplement his team. And then the Minotaur coming out from Super Yoshi. Super clutch as well. I understand why it was the eventual pickup coming out from uh, the side of uh, TNC. And uh, Super Yoshi made a case for this one. The second, uh, second picked Benedetta, however, still very scary, but Heads is up for the job. He did, and uh, remember, he's, honestly it was Heads that really kind of started the momentum for TNC there. And really when you look back at their matches and whatnot throughout the regular season up to this point, like I said, they get to a point where they usually have some form of a lead, but unfortunately, it slipped through their hands. This time, it looked like it was going to be the same situation. And then all of a sudden, a very good call came through for them. They punish Blacklist International, and they end up getting that game number one. That's big for here for TNC, at least in the series. Now, again, I'm wondering if they learned enough from this where they can actually potentially sweep Blacklist International here, keeping things alive for them going forward. That's yeah. actually a big question, right? Yeah. I mean, if you like, there were there moments where, hmm. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that looks familiar. You yeah, know? that looks familiar. <laughs> well, uh, again, we want to give a big shout out, of course, to all our official restreamers from Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, and all over the world. Yeah, we have local restreamers, and of course, we have international restreamers from Cambodia, from the Middle East, North America. I know they're having an ACP, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and of course, our favorite people, Indonesia. Yeah. What's up, guys? Shout out to Mirko if you're streaming. Shout out to Strex. And all of them are tuned in to witness our players fight for victory. Now, if you're asking me, will this be a sweep for TNC? I'm still uh, not going to be sold on that, especially because the Blacklist 
International have shown signs of their own uh, brilliance in the defense, right? So maybe there will be some uh, changes in here. Maybe uh, Florin plus the Famis might be, uh, you know, them double dipping into that. Might, uh, yeah, yeah exactly. you know? it might have been too much. Might have been too much. Too much support. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe, and we'll see how they adjust. But uh, also, we have to give a big shout out to Smart, the Giga Arena. It's now open for all Smart and TNT subscribers, where you can join an array of arcade games and esports tournaments, especially MLBB. And to do that, just create an account on Giga Arena. Dot smart using your smart or mo TNT mobile numbers. And of course, with the new Smart Giga Arena 20, you can lock the world of Giga Arena tournaments for your shot at prizes. Now, Giga Arena comes with two Giga Arena tickets and 100 MB for all sites for only 20 pesos. Valid for one day. Load Giga Arena 20 now in the Smart Online Store. Let's go. Yep, let's, let's play some go. games. Big shout out to Smart. Thank you for that. And also, I just want to throw it out there too. Hey, TNC. We talked about the, the floor, the ceiling was high. They're not 0% anymore on that blue side, gentlemen. They that's, now have a win. That's a good stat to have. They got it, yeah. right? That's a good stat to have. And Sorry. here's the Sorry. thing. So we, we kind of, there was some poking fun here throughout that game, of course, but for TNC, we have constantly wanted to see this organization, this team, really kind of get to this point where they refine things and everything else. But before that, we're going to have to have an interview. And we're going to go ahead and throw it over to the host out there in the audience. Para sa malupit na bakbakan sa pagitan ng TNC Pro and Blacklist International, kailangan natin ng konting inside scoop. That's right. Siyempre kasama ang kanilang correspondent, si Jerish mula sa TNC and Danica mula sa Blacklist. How are you guys? Kinakabahan ba kayo? What's the feeling right now? Nakakaba po, tsaka... Intense, ang intense mo nung laban kanina. Ba't ikaw yung kinakabahan? Eh, meron na kayong... Oh, meron na daw isa. May point naman, may point naman. Paano nga ba nag-prepare yung teams nyo coming into this match? Ikaw muna, Danica. Um, kanina, before kami umalis ng bootcamp, nag-scream pa sila. And then, pagdating... Ay, ah. Tapos, um, nung nasa lunch area naman kami, um... Nan pinanood ulit nila yung laban nila before. Uh, nung round one sa TNC. So, inaral nila kung saan sila nagkamali nung round one. So, ayun. Yan. Studying. Okay, yeah. reviewing. Reviewing. Yeah. Review nila lahat. Okay. How about naman for TNC? Sa amin naman po, same lang din. Before pumalis, nag-scream. And then, minamotivate po namin yung isa't isa. Lalo na po yung mga players. And then, syempre po ang pinaka-importante sa lahat, praying. Praying talaga. Oh, lagi ko sila nakikita mag-pray. Okay, you've mentioned more about the motivation yes. part. Diba? Kamusta, kamusta ang TNC, like, mentally, mentally wise? Like, good vibes ba sila heading into this match? Kinakabahan ba sila? What did you hear from the rest of them? Ano, um, okay naman po sila. Kasi, most likely po, like, ang ginagawa lang naman po is, syempre po, scream and then um minu motivate yung isa't isa tapos ayun po okay so i assume si coach Ben Tings diba siya ang leader ng mga motivational coach pero sa side pa ng Blacklist International i want to know kamusta ang vibes ng boys heading in forward into this match actually okay silang lahat like um na nakikita ko na nagtutulungan sila so alam naman natin galing kami sa loose trick diba pero um, I can see sa team sa team na to na talagang um, alam nila na kaya pa rin nilang lumaban and alam nilang kaya nilang umabot ng playoffs. So ayun, nakakatuwa lang din makita yon behind the scenes. Para naman ma-motivate sila, we want a cheer from both of you, okay? Okay, simulan muna natin sa TNC. Cheer for your team, you can get the crowd going, it's up to you. Okay, okay. Let's go TNC! Kayang-kaya natin to. Huwag tayong susuko at tiwala lang tayo kay God. Love it! Okay, para naman sa Blacklist, ikaw naman, Danica. Let's go, Blacklist! Kaya natin to. Abot tayo sa playoffs. Oh, may mga, may mga nag-cheer din dito at siguradong reading ready na ang dalawang kuponan para sa ating game number two. Kaya babalik na tayo sa ating mga casters. Casters, pasok! Thank you so much, Mara Hands, Danica, and Jerish. Great to hear from you again. Is that the, the right way to say it? Jerish. 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 You gotta ask Manjean for that one. <laughs> gotta ask Manjean. Okay, yeah. now we know. Uh, but again, this is uh, an interesting series yeah. that we have to kind of yeah. talk about. We're, now that these weeks, again, we're closing out week five here today, so things are going to be coming into place, I would say, already for the playoff spots. Those four secured. Teams are still fighting for it, of course. You take a look at the game one draft here, the recap, how things fell into place. TNC, like I said, 
and Wolf mentioned the, the early pickup for the Benedetta actually worked great for them. It really established that early kind of lead yeah. for them in the game. So I'm wondering, you know, with it, the considering of flipping sides and everything else, how does TNC kind of replicate that great early game yeah. that they had in the previous one? Uh, maybe just like in the previous game, let's uh, just discard all of these uh, uh, jungler, assassin junglers and go for utility because Ryzen looked to be very confident with that kind of base tower and he's taking over the, the map and he's essentially just building stacks and stacks of money so that he can uh, utilize his own body to be the frontliner for TNC and then allow the others to just play their own game. Kind of felt like this is a comfort play style for heads as he's just controlling the map. Nomad, as long as he's freely hitting, as you saw in the previous game, he's going to be confident and that's also true with Hatred. Hatred didn't have to follow where Super Yoshi was and he's just doing his own thing, basically. Yeah. He's just landing the shots. I yeah. feel like that's just it, right? You're landing your shots, you make sure they hit, but it's also a question of making sure that there was a reason why you land those shots. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you, you play in a bar, yeah, oh, you hit a shot, good job for you. But what happened afterwards, right? Here, in, in this specific lineup that we saw, it made the rest of Blacklist back off. It opened up space for TNC, okay. right? So it doesn't matter if he do he's not getting kills with it, as long as it's doing the intended effect. Yeah, for a, for a part too, a lot of the times those shots were landing at, towards the end of the game, man, where you know it was bringing members of Blacklist International down to half health yep. or less. And so that's threat enough. Exactly. I like that they pointed it out because that happened with Haji as well as uh, Yue. And when Yue is low, like when he gets hit by the Star Shatter, he doesn't necessarily die, but he's down like, what, 10, 15% HP? Yeah. And the thing is, he cannot front for his team anymore. He cannot be there to p eventually pop the Fire Miss Ultimate, which means that he kind of has to walk so much before he's able to, s to help his teammates. So, yeah, in, in, uh, that's a really nice uh, uh, observation there, nice, because sometimes killing a, a hero might not be um, that impactful as as you just poking him, yeah. you know? It's not it's always like the a, end game, you it's know? It's like a 30 second crowd control where you're <laughs> stopping them from doing anything, right? That's true. See, so thank you for acknowledging sometimes I say smart things. <laughs> Right? Yeah, you say a lot of smart yeah. things. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate it now. <laughs> also, you have to appreciate the XP lanes, man. The, yeah. the top five picked heroes right now. Uh, we've seen a lot of R a lot. I'd love mm -hmm. to see it. I, I really like this hero a lot. CC, of course, we haven't seen so much of lately. Yeah. Um, X Borg, Benedetta, and Paquito, a lot of the Benedetta uh, popping up here. But I'll stand by it. XP lane, probably one of the most, or if not the most, impactful lane yeah. uh, currently that we're seeing in the meta here really develop because yeah. uh, that's just something that's fallen into place here. And I think even in this case, right, Heads, when we first started watching Heads play, it, this all reminds me again from the previous season or when we first started seeing King Kong play. Now, I mean, look where King Kong is now, right? The, yeah. the success that he has found. But even for the first time, when we started seeing King Kong play last season, it's kind of reminiscent in, in that way for TNC now, where you're seeing some of Nomad, yeah. just kind of savage. You see heads performing, right, on the Benedetta here. And these guys, this is where they start to develop their personalities, their, you know, their play style and everything here. Yeah. So XP lane, obviously, amazing to see now. Let's talk about Black International a little bit here while the teams are getting set up for that game too. Rockheart, you saw how they almost put on an amazing turntabled match, right? They almost completely flipped the ta table over. It was about halfway, but they didn't fully get it over. So what do they need to do? Was it that possible last pick, Florin? Was, was there something better there? Or how does Black International adjust? Honestly, I can't say that. It, it's so easy to say, ah, oh, maybe too too much support, less dam too not, not not enough damage. It's easy to say that, but imagine if there wasn't a floor in in no. that game. Yeah, think of people would just instantly die. Yeah, <laughs> you can say true. that. Yeah, because of the blue minute. Um, since we played it as if you basically made the most out of the situation, out of the floor in as well as the fair miss, yeah. right? And it, it just uh, went down that route and. Uh, I believe that if um, if you're the the real thing that's missing from the side of Black International is somebody to stay in front. Although Sinsui kind of did that, he needs a, someone else. Like so, maybe some substitutes for the Florin might have been Tigreal, for example, that can uh, yeah. be there for the front lights. Or maybe they don't pick up the if they really want to go for the Paquito, they pick a Thames for, perhaps for um, for Edward instead mm. because they already know that the Benedetta was the answer. 
and there are other heroes that we, I mean, they are, the Blacklist International is a team that's known to pick up the thams when they're, when they're put in this kind of situation. I think that's why you have to kind of consider where, how much flexibility can this lineup from Blacklist International have? Yeah. Uh, you know, again, when we talk about some of the struggles that both these teams have, where it was, it, it was shot calling here. Now in that game, they actually had some great defensive shot calls. But unfortunately for them, TNC was able to capitalize on positioning. And that's kind of what they did here. So we are going to be now jumping into draft for game number two. You can already see it. TNC is still going to be on this blue side here. They pick up the Minotaur right away. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. And it's Blacklist um, has access to the Barrett's or the Fredrin. I think they still pick up the Fredrin. Pharmis is also open, so they might also pick that up. Free Roamers banned for Blacklist, by the way. I'm oh, sorry, banned against TNC. Shadow so that's, that's probably thing. saying something, okay. right? They sure. probably think, you know what? Super Yoshi pro had a pretty good impact in that previous game. I guess we didn't, it, it wasn't just as apparent. Yeah. So, yeah, Blacklist is basically just respecting Super Yoshi, and that forces him to basically just pick out the <laughs> pick out the Minotaur straight up. Okay. There's the answer. Still going for the utility matchup that we're so used to seeing. It's going to be the box up. The of course, maybe. the Fredrin. Yeah. Let them come. Yep. They will That's going to be Benedetta. Benedetta, Benedetta still. <laughs> yeah. And maybe cool. the, the approach now for Blacklist will be different because they're now rocking the Vexana. The so they go CC, yeah, attacking yeah, frontliner. Can also split sometimes. Um, so that's a really a good good pickup coming up. Adjustment for Blacklist. Uh, the Faramis, interestingly, <laughs> is the band for Blacklist instead. I was actually thinking the same thing. I thought they were probably going to pick the Faramis up. <laughs> they banned it instead. So that's very curious. I guess Diggy is also a, something you'd want to ban out here if you're TNC. Mm -hmm. Just because of the impact that the Baksha and the Minotaur probably gives. And not to mention it's also a bit of a comfort for you know, yeah. players like Haji. Yep. Haji Johei, it's ba pa na. These are the things that get passed down, you know, from the <laughs> Previous <laughs> teammates, you know what I mean? The Varya ban, oh, that's uh, good. That's, that's, a, that's a smart, yeah, smart ban here. Taking a look Haji, at Ryzen as well. Haji Joy. Stats, Lancelot, Baksha, Fredrin. Uh, of course, you know, people would still kind of like to see the Lancelot pop up time to time, but really it's just very difficult to make it work. And if you go with Assassin, it's it's more likely that you see the Nolan currently yeah. pop up. Um, but still, the Baksha, Fredrin matchup that we're so used to seeing here, this will be kind of crucial for Ryzen. Their rotation around the map whenever you have a box shot is great. You can merely put yeah. pressure there if you need to. So yeah. we'll see that. Carry's going to be the last band, though. Mm -hmm. oh. OK, so maybe Blacklist will just last pick their Marksman, their gold laner. This time, they can pick up the Haji hero. Um, do they want to go Florida once again? Maybe not. OK, so that's Harif. Huh. OK, good plan from TNC to take away the Kaja, though. So that's, uh, that's definitely an answer. Okay, so without the Nathan, you just go back to Roger or Claude in this case. So you go Claude, maybe. Feels like and a pretty good answer, yeah. Aurora or Nana, actually. Nana's good. Nana is actually really good for TNC. I didn't cure the pain. Uh, the Valentina. Uh, uh, Valentina comes through. I wonder if Haji still remembers how to play a Cho. I'm sure he does. I, I feel like that could maybe be something you can use to kind of deal with the Minotaur mm -hmm. Benedetta situation you've go, got going on. Okay. And maybe, again, what mm -hmm. tools to pick up the gold laner or pick up, you know, what do you call that? Oh. Assassinate, whoever, whatever. Yeah. The gold laner. <laughs> they still go Roger. Interesting. Roger. Interesting. All right. Okay, so what do you, you pair up the Harris with the Cho actually? Har Cho or Kaja because they're Kaja. guaranteed stuns. Kaja's banned out though. Yep, so. that's banned. So Cho maybe. Cho, I feel what like. What a Franco. Good. Ooh. What about a Franco? Maybe a little bit of a throwback. Eson, I know we've seen come him, on. Yeah. Eson, he's, he's, he's holding up. Come on. He's he, waiting for it. He's waiting for it right there. Come on, do it. Cho or Franco, you show us something a little different because yeah. I feel like TNC is already prepared for all the usuals. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you need, uh, again, like uh, the Franco is good in a way that they can front line for the team. But yeah, Tigreal is, looks to be a, Tigreal, yeah. a very reliable option. And the Cho as well. And the Ruby, which we haven't oh, talked about. Ruby's a, yeah. Actually, Ruby's the perfect one. 
Okay. Okay. There, there it, is. it is. There it is. Good call. <laughs> why the ruby? If for those scratching yeah. their hand, Wolf, like why? Why uh, ruby? So you can uh, tank up. You can be in the front lines, and uh, you have AOE stun that always deal uh, always is good with the Harith. You want that, and uh, you don't necessarily give a big ultimate to the Valentina, mm. so you're okay. Okay. Well, nope. that is uh, going to be both lineups here once again for TNC and Blacklist International. We'll see if TNC can cap it out here. Also looking up at the lineup ratings, it's not too different, right? A little bit of lead for Blacklist International according to the breakdown here. Now you guys can let us know once again on YouTube which team you're feeling more. Let us know with hashtag BLCK for Blacklist International or hashtag TNC mm -hmm. with your user IDs and your user server IDs for a chance to win oh. some diamonds. Speaking of YouTube comments, CM the ML Analyst, what a nice name, says yes, Ruby is good too. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, well, he agrees. He is the analyst. He is the analyst. Oh, he is we got good. it in his name. Let's jump into the land of Dawn here. It's game number two, match point right now for TNC as they're trying to claw into, to fly, to soar into the playoffs if they can. But Blacklist International looking to end that here as we go into a game at two. Can they bring it to game three in this best of three series? I'll not be surprised if this will be a game three. The last time that both of these teams faced up against it was also the same situation where game one went to TNC, Blacklist took game number two, and then TNC just uh, finished it off. This time it's going to be Edward CC versus uh, Benedetta. We know CC can actually win that lane, and Vexana for you eh, means that there's a lot of buff that's gonna happen. They also force the retribution onto Ryzen, also important, and the Harith for Blacklist, right? So they have good mixture of damage in the late game, like CC plus Harith. Yep. It means that you have physical and magic damage, um, but you you know that the uh, Roger kind of struggle, struggles versus the Harith. But then you're, if you play this correctly, if you're Nomad, especially with this build, Impure Rage, like a Benny Cutie, he's going to get, what, Thunderbolt or Windtalker first? It's going to be A-OK -okay in their mm. early stage. All okay. Right. So with that, again, you're kind of looking to see how, this time around, TNC, if they get the similar lead they had before, or if it's controlled by Black International. You already mentioned Edward being on the CC can help with that, right? Because again, Ed Heads was the one that got that 2-0 early lead in the lane, snowballed from there. So this time around, if Black International can just keep things together, they're gonna go soak in some of these XP cards, get that level four available to them before that first turtle comes up here. So we'll see how that first objective fight goes here. UA as well, waiting for that level four. They might try to make a play even on Heads, but it's gonna be spotted out. They get the level fours. UA is just about to grab it, and now they head for this turtle here. So TNC gonna have to fight for positioning. Super Yoshi does not have uh, that level four just yet, so that could be crucial for this fight. It's actually great positioning right now for Haji and Edward, right up on the front, Whoop. making Whoa. sure since we have something to do. But look at that! The flank from Hatred coming in with the Eternal Guard, making sure. But Tensui still coming out on top with the Retribution. Chases on for Haji. Oh, oh this is out. Just by an inch. Just by an inch. But then Blacklist International, great place for them. Super Yoshi wasn't level 4 yet during that moment. So despite the flank coming out from Hatred, they didn't deal the damage. Enough damage, I mean. And Blacklist International are abusing the fact that they have good early game compared to TNC. Whew. Okay, so let's see again. Okay, some early damage, early pokes here. But Black International guarding them themselves. That first, you know, objective already gives them this little advantage they can work around with. But can they find a kill? Hold on. Yeah, they're looking for that right now. Oheb doing a pretty huge job. And Sensui first blood. Man, the Oheb difference with the Harif, yeah. you can feel it right away. So I agree, Wolf. Their yeah. early game is insane. Insane. And the fact that they also denied that cart up top, the gold lane, um, the gold lane cart versus this uh, Nomad uh, Roger. That's actually pretty good. And they're trying to deny him even more. Might call on his teammates here. Yep, Super Yoshi, check that one. Oh, they well, need look, the cart up top. Look at the confidence here. They, yep. Since we know that, ah, oh, you want this cart? You're gonna <laughs> have to work for it. Well, right now, everything falling in place. Blacklist International continuing that lead. It's great for, for Blacklist International to, to kind of 
find this in the early game. Given the, given the circumstance of their lineup, though, yeah. is TNC just the lineup where, hey, all right, we need a little more time. Obviously, we know that Roger's a little expensive, yeah. takes time to build yeah. up here. So maybe that's the game plan for TNC yeah. here, Wolf. If you look at their composition, maybe not. But if you compare it with the opponent's composition, yeah, it is. So mm. they just need to take their time. Like Individually, if you're just going to be isolating the, the five-man line of here for TNT, you're going to think, like, okay, this is early game. But if you compare that to Black Lives Matter, it's much better that they uh, hedge their bets in the latter portions of the game. I like this. Edward maximizing that CC right now. And oh. he's basically outflanking heads each and every time. And once again, since we very clean with the Retribution, oh. he's now fighting off underneath oh. his Eternal Guard. That Eternal Guard, you oh. can't oh. ignore it, bro. It hurts. But Edward still can come out on top with a kill. Oh. Both oh. Eternal oh. Guards, oh. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's great to see. They, they hurt. They hit like a tank. Yeah. And now TNT will lose their purple buff. Blacklist International are not letting up. And they have uh, found their condition, and their, their win condition is pretty simple. Winning the early game. I kind of felt like the damage output for TNT is lack uh, luster for now, and Ohev just zoning out Nomad at this point. It's actually insane they can do this now, but you know okay. what? You get punished if you do it a little bit too much. Nice try with the curtain call, but not quite enough to survive yeah. against free. Well, got to give it up to uh, the rookie here, the savage rookie. Before Nomad Savage as Bruno last game, the last recorded Savage in MPLPH by a rookie was in season seven by Countless oh, Lunox. Oh, good time. That's, that's, a, that's a while. That's a long time. That's six seasons. Couple of three years. Almost three years. Yeah, yeah that's was that MSC? No, that was regular season. Yeah. That regular season, yeah. That was, that was a season before I joined the league, boys. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good time. I, I don't think I recall that matchup, but hold on. Me too. I don't. Oh my goodness, that's very aggressive here. Coming in from Blacklist's duo. Wow, full committal here for Blacklist. Even though Ed <laughs> is joining the party, but Heads comes out alive by the skin of his teeth. I was going to say, Heads gets away with his head. He's able to survive that one. What a uh, a time for him to stay alive. You know what? That was close. Oh. Blacklist was almost there. They were on the shoulders. And also de defended the turret for a while. But now Oheb and the gang will be here. Does have the Electro final blow so he can defend up top. Ooh. Any okay, port yeah. in the storm for TNT. But no, they, the Harith eventually will take out the Benetera. Man, look at this. Capping up onto this purple buff. <laughs> Super Yoshi already used up the middle and three. Gets punished here by Edwards. Coming in close here is Heads. He's coming in. He wants revenge. He's trying to see if he can get find the target here. But it's going to be Hatred who gets it instead. Okay, so a little response from TNT. But ultimately, they're going to have to give up the turtle once again to Blacklist International. They'll go ahead and secure themselves that. Yeah. But is this at least something for TNC here? These small minor wins, Wolf? For sure. Are they able to, to help them in the later stages of the game? Yeah, for sure. Because uh, it was a kill by... Oh, it was Nomit. It wasn't Nomit that got the kill, so... Yeah, okay. Uh -oh. Assist gold. Still Anymore. there. <laughs> Getting as much as they can. And of course, Eternal Guard hurts. You have to run. Yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. basically create space. And you know what? That's exactly what Blacklist did. Yeah. Good little pressure down on the bottom side, though. Meanwhile, with all that happening on that top side, so they finally get that turret down. And that's why I was saying, these small wins, small minor wins, whether that's a turret space to work with on the map, whether it's a pickoff here and there, they could help TNC in the long run, of course, but it really does depend and then that one on the know that it's a Blacklist International. Oh, hold on, Nomad. Oh, Nomad! Oh, no, wow, the one v one That usually shouldn't happen here, but right now, Oheb doing as much as he can, maybe before he goes down. And that's Haji and Yue close by. I think they kind of saw heads walk into the bush there, so they have to back off. Yeah. Oheb definitely, that's a win for Blacklist International. But he, get, he, did, he did get traded. Yeah, he did get traded, but the fact of the matter is he's stopping Nomad from farming. Oh. Yeah. Uh, like, a, like we said earlier, very expensive. This Roger needs time to kind of amp up and get to that point. And so with that, again, you know, you're looking at TNC, looking at the lineup that they have, seeing the deficit oh, that the here. Si here. And and with that, look at that, that the goal lane lane alone here, Ooh. quite a gap. It's going to be difficult now for catch up for TNC and uh, it's not like it's not like Blacklist's composition from the previous game which, where they have the Claude which deals AOE damage 
I'm not saying the TNC's lineup is not good in the late game. It's just that it's not. It's totally going to be different because at least for the club, you have AOE wave clear. Yeah. For TNC, they will. For them to prolong the game, they will have to uh, make miracles happen with hatreds, defense, maybe heads as well. Mostly single target, oh. right, for TNC. And I think they're trying to leverage that right now. So for Yoshi, though, wow. able to at least get the middle ones free onto the ground before he goes yeah. down. Heads, trying to get up from the side. No one available to get taken out in that side, no, so, Oh my goodness, this could be... This could be the Lord here. Yeah. Surely going to be the Lord. Oh, Ryzen, without retribution. Oh, no. Takes so much time. Oh. Haji, whoa! whoa no what a pull-in! Coming in from Haji, of course, no follow-up damage. Edward oh, not really no, built no, no. in terms of damage right now. The yo-yo! Okay. What the heck? <laughs> no, he was playing under that turret so confidently. Oh, Hatred, is Classic he going to go for it? Classic zero. No, he's oh. not. Doesn't have the damage at this point. Yep. Head's still pushing up top, so looking for anything they can find, but... <laughs> Even with that, again, Blacklist International still on this side of the jungle. Coming in hard, though. It's going to be His a heads. rise in. I think he might have been enough more than he could chew. And there you go. Eternal Guard to the face. But look at that. Heads on the back. He took out Yue. Now he's going to get That is off. huge. And they're going to go ahead, chase him off, trade him off. Electro final ball canceled. And there you go. That's a one for two. Yeah. One. Any port in the start for TNT, that's what we're talking about. That kill out to Yue was... Uh, Super good because uh, it's still a minus one for Black Ops International. Maybe they can keep their holy defense up this time. And they kept it in the middle. So that means that they can defend their ne the next uh, big minion wave. Nomad is in no man's land. Huh. Now, T okay. Yeah, he's going to get back. He has, oh, to. He he has to back off. And right now, they are going to be dealing with this without him for the next few seconds. Super Yoshi is under the turret. He is still alive, but very, very low. Rising up on front. Lord is going to be super duper low HP as well, so they will be able to clear. That might be disengaged. Successful okay. defense for TNC. Yep. That's successful. Yep. They also kept their uh, outer turret in the bottom lane, so it's actually more than TNC could have wished for. And they all, all started by Heads' uh, play onto the back lines, taking out Yue. But in comes Blacklist International. They know that they have the strength. In this, the power spike in this oh. uh, early game. Confident Haji. Blacklist right now, but Haji oh, is low. Oh, I think oh, that's oh. going to be another easy takeoff there. Four heads oh, on the side. Oh. Didn't really need to do anything much. Yeah. Just go for the last hit. Good pickup there. Also, key item pickups for TNC as oh, well. Yeah. That was the Malefic Roar being picked up for heads. <laughs> so you're wondering, are they getting to a point where they can actually win a, a team fight? Well, I'm not, not now. Maybe in the 15 minute mark. When they and get the spike. third item on uh, no mid. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the Eternal Guard that was copied by Hatred defended the bottom lane. That was uh, <laughs> okay. That's uh, it's I don't use. know the good use. I don't know how <laughs> he was able to mi micro that uh, control that Eternal Guard, but he actually did the best play possible for TNC. <laughs> hey, sometimes you know the Eternal Guard yeah. has a mind of its own, man. Yeah. Just let it do its thing. <laughs> That's what you do. But my, my question again of, about this was, is it really just down to Nomad getting the items that he needs? Yeah, he's nearly 3,000 gold behind, of course, yeah. Oheb. And when you're talking about these team fights in the damage department from Blackness International, it's a lot to deal with if you're TNC, especially when you're trying to get into range of fighting against that Zaman force. And that's the tough part. It might be even better for TNC to just keep giving up the Lord for now to buy them those extra minutes you're talking about here, Wolf. Yeah. Yes, no Because he is the source of damage. I, I believe Hatred is nullified so much. Does have the one-hit potential still against uh, Oheb. But then you need a lot of other damage sources here apart from heads as well as uh, Hatred. So yeah, Nomad's... I think power spike okay, is, oh, is uh, going to be important for TNT. Yeah, right now, I feel like it's safer for TNT to just back off if this is worse, right? Just give it, give it up. At least for like 5 seconds, 10 seconds, and then go for the re-engage. Cool. And right now, too, it's like Ryzen trying to find the right angle, driving on in. There you go, they drive on in, and again, it will be problematic for Haji this time. Here comes Heads, he's joining the middle oh. of the fight. Sensui 
He got bursted down so Ta quickly nena. here. And now the damage is Ta unreal coming in from TNT, TNT, who could manage a comeback here. If we're seeing this correctly, Eternal Guard is still being taken care of here, but it is 2v4. Edward, oh. super duper low. You already no. used up Eternal Guard. It's what gonna a be fight. a lord. What a fight for TNC. And again, it was. Uh, at this time, it was heads that forced that suppression, the Winter Truncheon play coming out from Yue. Um, also, was able to force the damage onto Oheb. And then Hatred, Hold up. the finisher this time. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh Edward. my goodness, what the heck just happened? And look there? at heads. I think that was the Terrify. And now it's heads. Oh, uh, just zoning oh, out Yue here. Absorb the Eternal Guard. I think he's going to go down. It's one for one. That oh, was unbelievable. Man. What happened to Edward there? Did he yeah. stunt or something? Yeah, but but then again, the fact that it was an exchange and the TNC lost the heads that moment, I think um, Blacklist might have even the better shot at this oh. Lord fight. Yeah, they, okay. they, it was actually Edward they going they down there, bottom of the time, time. Yeah. Yeah. stall it out. So now it's going to be Black and Smash with control over the Lord for now. And the Ryzen was too low. The members of TNC were too low to deal with the Lord because of what Edward did. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Finally, a re engagement here coming in from Blacklist. Although he's <laughs> deciding they do not uh, want see. to fight just yet. Maybe when Heads gets back on the field. Oh no. Okay, it's, half is low. it's half health though. This Lord take could be close. Blacklist going four men on mid. Trying to see if they can maybe cut off Heads' rotation. He's I mean, Heads has been flanking non stop yeah. here. Okay. So, Once again, it's going to start up here. They went with that full reset. Both yeah. teams also oh, just yeah. back into it. Full force, Edward. Edward's gonna be the one caught out here. Curtain call, slows down Nomad. Oh my goodness, and then re-engage, counter gauge rather by Super Yoshi against Oheb. There's the sound force on the side. It's gonna be Heads diving in. Getting a lot of damage into the black members, but they're still alive. Nomad, a nice cleanup coming in from the black the squad. Everyone's low, but I think they came out on top there. Three members down for TNC. Edward again. He's just playing the part, gets the attention, forces a fight, and now they go for more! Oheb going straight for Hatred there, and takes down the turret on the way out. Yep. I think that uh, you're correct, the, what do you call that? The curtain call. It, it locked down no mid. Yeah, That was exactly. crucial. That's crucial. Edward is working on the Lord. Can we look at the Lord health right now? How low is it? Uh, if we, even without Sinsui. They might take it. They might take it. Yeah. Oh, it was too slow. And so we will be up though. They're 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 gonna be able to get it. They yeah. got the eternal guard there as well. Lord versus mini lord, and there it is. Blacklist. This time it was Edward just being very tanky. Great idea from TNT, but they didn't have the enough damage. And then Nomad jumps in front, like literally in the bubble of Blacklist International, and then was controlled afterwards. Despite Super Yoshi tanking through, Blacklist International still managed to find the big opening out there. And now, I believe that um, TNT is identifying, okay, we need Hatred for, the, for these fights. He's the AoE damage dealer yeah. and the finisher, if ever, yep. for we'll the see, kills. We'll see it this time again. Yeah, there's a, there's a pretty big lead for Blacklist International, but TNT, they, they can actually win some of these fights. Yeah. It really depends on that setup potential. Also, Hatred, which ultimate is he going to use and help with this fight yeah. himself? So he doesn't have one just yet. But Lord and the rest of Blacklist here now. Yep, diving in onto that. It's gonna be, oh, that was a nice pull. That was a nice pull from Haji. They take out the crucial tank, the front line of TNC. Four members still alive, heads clearing up on top, and now they're trying to see if they can maybe finish this. Eternal Guard is still up. Clear oh. our dominions, though. So no minions means no push for Blacklist for the meantime, but maybe they can wait up for the next wave. Yeah, they have the next wave. Might Patriots. still be able to push it in. Good damage coming in from Edward Woo! as well, locking down Ryzen. And I think with that, Bye -bye. we are going to a game number three. Game number three. Blacklist International will do it in game two, extending the series to game three. TNC not game able to keep up three. that time. This time, overall team fighting coming out from the side of Blacklist International. Once again, moving to be really good. I believe Setsumi with uh, Frederick played so well. And then, of course, the early game advantage with the Harith. Super well done coming up from Ohip. Took advantage of that. Again, it was uh, a 
I think it was just a really good mix of damage that this lineup had from Black International this time. You talked about it earlier as well with the Harith there and the CC, man. Edward, a lot of the times, like you're thinking, whoa, Edward, you're getting caught up. It kind of throws it back getting to game one, right, where the Paquito, right? but yeah. it's like, no, yeah. this is this is CC. Yeah. I can survive some of this. And then, like you guys mentioned, the curtain call as well. Yeah. Really just playing a great part for that whole lineup to round out here. And it just seemed like the whole time I was kind of wondering, all right, where is TNC going to find that win in terms of a team fight? And it looked like things were kind of getting there. They were kind of falling into place. It just didn't happen fast enough. The MVP for game two, though, going to be none other than Yue. And you can hear, like, if you are here in the arena, I don't know if it's just that same person that's always shouting the Yue, <laughs> but it's here. <laughs> yeah, we Again, can feel it. congratulations on that Vexana pick here. Great gameplay. Yep. Massive gameplay from you where just outputting the damage that's needed for Blacklist International, going in for the winter truncheon place as well. That also showed us how good he is when it comes to baiting the commitments coming out from TNT. And that's definitely going to be a problem for heads. I think that if you're playing the Benedetta, it's much better if you are ahead. Because that means that your enemies will not have enough uh, enough of a time to get the winter truncheon gold that's needed. And then TNT, unfortunately, fought the first two Turtles despite them not having the advantage. And Blacklist International really just abused that factor. And Super Yoshi is easily taken out in this game. I think that there's always a merit to identify what first item you will get as the Minotaur. Of course, you're baited to go for the Flask of the Oasis, but sometimes it helps if you have uh, other defensive items. A Nomad also proving his worth as a Gold Daner. Massive place from him, and that's Edward escaping death, certain death. Oh, with the Purify. And then, despite the jump coming out from his, there wasn't any more damage. Nomad, although he tried to go for the play on the Sensui, was still left in the middle of the fight for Blacklist International. And then Ohem, knowing that there's no other escape for Hatred at that point, has managed to run away into uh, to, to, to run away with a, with a kill, with murder, up against that. Uh, Valentina and Hatred unfortunately far too late on the on him copying the ultimate of the Vixana that's why he, he wasn't able to get anything out of it afterwards and in, and in this case for the side of TNC it's clear that when they uh, that they needed the early stage to be in their favor before they're uh, actually able to um, convert into the, the game. It looks like it's very scrappy for them, but we know that they can team fight. And that's one thing that maybe could be the trend for the next game. They might choose for heroes that are good at team fighting. Because in this case, for TNC, they, they're good at splitting them up, and maybe they change this Roger to a good late game hero. We saw the Bruno in game number one, and had it been that the Bruno was picked up in this game, maybe things could have been different. Maybe they have some... Um, some strength in the early stages of the game, but unfortunately it wasn't the case, and Blacklist International um, comes up with a victory. And we can see that um, for Blacklist International, they picked up this Harith that prioritized the Stardium Scythe into the Feather of Heaven, and at a certain point in this game, Nomad couldn't lane against Oheb. When we said that the Benicuti build would have been good, like that's Impure Rage and Thunderbelt as the priorities for the for the Roger, that might have been a might have been the choice for Nomad to kind of salvage his game, but unfortunately wasn't the case. And he allowed Oheb to be the carry of this game as well as the rich guy. 88,000 damage dealt by the Harith. And to take note, this is a Harith with a Vexana as a teammate. So that meant that he really did his job. Oheb. Unfortunately for TNC, Nomad um, received 70,000 damage <laughs> compared to Oheb oh. as the Roger, as the gold laner. And that uh, speaks for his aggression in this game and the fact that he's getting pummeled most of the time. And to be fair, if, despite the loss for TNC, I believe that Nomad played this game well enough. And now when it comes to damage dealt, it's Oheb and then Hatred. Look at that, 74,000 mm. damage. Compared to UA 55k, it's rare for a Valentina to out damage the Vexana, but it seems like the Vexana is uh, going to be the game changer in this game. Back to back wins for the, well, for UA, I mean, for the Vexana versus this Valentina, and this game that we saw. And then Edward um, also made uh, a lot of wonderful for plays in this game. And despite we 
despite us seeing the Benedetta being really good for the metagame that we have, we forget that the CC is actually still a pretty good hero, as you've seen in this game. Difficult to take down, difficult to also manage, and kind of is the way to deal with the Benedetta. So maybe teams that are um, picking up the Benedetta yeah. might look at the CC as one of the... Uh, one of the... Uh, Counters, I guess, or the lane counters at least. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, the, the yeah. Take take a sip, Wolf. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, great breakdown there. It was a lot happening, of course, in uh, that game, at game number two, and now yeah. it, it. So, I think we've talked about this before. A good answer to the Roger when it's when you see that Roger pop up in a game or maybe in your games uh, over at home, you pick up the Harris. Right, it seems to be a pretty good matchup against the Roger in the gold lane. And I really like, I don't know if a lot of people will agree here, but for some reason for the past few games of Blacklist International, I like the Blacklist International that don't rely too much on the counter push. Oh. I like it when they're more proactive. Like in this this game, no healing or anything, just wham, bam, just yeah. hunt, punching on each other. Maybe, maybe this is a new style they can kind of adapt where they don't necessarily need to take all the hits and then punch back. Just do the punching yourself. Just do the work yourself. That if they look good at that one. Could be the answer. Uh, and I think that's a good point, Rockheart, because honestly, it feels like Blacklist International, this season anyway, has, I mean, we, we associate them so much with the Ube strap. Yeah. You know, people around the world did as well. And I think they're in this phase where it's like, okay, that's not so much our play style anymore. Like, yeah, we can still have that up our sleeve, but we're trying to develop this new also play style of this lineup of Blacklist International. And I think we've seen that kind of develop over the season so far. Now, with this game too, the way they played that, it worked for them. And you see that right happen, here. right? Because even from game one where they picked up the floor and it's like, all right, well, this isn't 100% Ube, if you will, but there is a, you know, this big kind of true healing going through and everything like that. Yeah. So I would also like to see Blacklist International test the waters a little more with this kind of lineup that they had with maybe even something new as they approach some of the next matchups they have even after this week five closes out. So again, we can only contemplate so much here on what could happen in game three ahead of us because honestly guys, there's been a lot of sweeps going on, you know, so many sweeps. throughout the regular season, yeah. not just this weekend alone. Um, Last weekend was all sweeps. Yeah, exactly. So I'm wondering, how either of these teams kind of adjust. But before that, we want to go ahead and welcome once again all of our viewers that are watching on TikTok to go ahead and join the goodie bag lottery and be one of the lucky winners today. What's up, TikTokers? Just go to TikTok and open the MPL Philippines TikTok channel. That's at MPLPH underscore official. And then click on the official live stream. And once you're there, top left. Wow, we know that where to point now. Uh, <laughs> Click on the goodie bag. That's going to be there until the base breaks. Make yeah. sure to click it before the base breaks. Once it breaks, it's gone. Yeah. It's in. By the way, some people have asked, oh, I thought it was like uh, when the game started, I thought it was before the base breaks. It's random, guys. It's random. Uh, depending on the week, not like it's randomly random. here. Yeah. To, be, to be fair, uh, the, the entire time between... Before the base breaks, quite a long time, you know. That's so. true. <laughs> that's true. So you're still correct, I think. Yeah, we're st yeah that's true. <laughs> uh, now that I think about it, Wolf, that's true. You're right. But uh, again, and also for everybody watching on YouTube, yes, we see you. Uh, we, see you. we are, of course, also keeping an eye out for you guys that are joining the giveaway happening on YouTube. Go so ahead. So wherever you decide to watch and join us, feel free to join the giveaways and goodie bags here. Now, we're just a couple minutes away here from the third game. I know you guys have both shared things uh, about this matchup. And again, we have to talk about the what's sort of, in a way, what's on the line. Because every time we get to this point in the regular yeah. season, we start to really feel the pressure of playoffs. Yep. The yeah. pressure for these teams building up here. It's funny because I literally saw Ben Fink's post, he doesn't, he hates the number eight right now. Yeah. And I feel for, I feel for the guy, you know. I, yep. I know exactly what he's been going through. Um, and he's been going through that for how many seasons now? Yeah. yeah. So the, you know, the stakes, it's hard to not, it's hard to not talk about that when you're talking about TNT. Yeah. Well, you can see that TNT has the, the capabilities to win team fights, right? They but can fight. They yeah. can really team fight, but sometimes, you know, um, you cannot discredit what Blacklist International is doing as a team. Like, 
Blacklist International also has great team fighting in them. Like we saw that, and with, between the two teams that struggles, it's really difficult to see them kind of fight off against each other when we know that both of them are in the quote unquote red zone. I mean, Blacklist International technically isn't, but if they do lose this, the, that means that TNC will probably have a better shot at the uh, playoffs. Remember, if TNC wins this, this will be a uh, the, the two series that TNC have won are against Blacklist, so yeah. if there will be a tiebreaker eventually, mm. the TNC will be coming up on top. The head to head? Exactly. Oh, oh my goodness. Because they also get three points if they win. That's if right. They win this, right? That's so, right. Um, taking a look that. as well for Blacklist International, their top five pick heroes, Yarlot, the Nathan, the Fredrin, the Xana, and the Barretts here. And so far, like we've said, based on these heroes, based on the different games that we've seen Blacklist International play, they have done their own experimentation, you know, yeah. throughout the regular season here. And really, when they, when you look at these top picks for Black International, kind of paints that picture as well. I'm wondering if we actually see the Nathan kind of pop up here, for example, for this next mm. matchup. The yeah. Arlot, we've seen so much of Arlot uh, lately from other teams, mm. so to speak. So again, what kind of falls into place here, and really, what is that game plan for like both the these teams? Guy. Because Thank you. Yeah, if you, we know the Phoenix Army is out there, guys. We know that TNC has, you know, these these avid fans that really want to see them succeed and rise up because we've had glimpses of that. The best season they had goes back to season nine. Season nine, yeah. Was season Third nine. place. Third place, and that was a very fun season because you had these, you it's know, a roller coaster. Yeah, it was a roller coaster. We had so much of this story yeah. from TNC as well, kind of building up there. And so, you know, they've been trying to find that from seasons after that. And unfortunately, yeah, it, they've been struggling. But this is the thing. These teams kind of have to go through this. This is the typical, you know, ebb and flow, if you will, of teams here in the organizations in the league. So with all that being said, let's jump into game three draft here between TNC and Blacklist International. This time around, it's Get still TNC Sunday. on that blue side. Blacklist on the red Ooh. here. Oh, Drop Lou, you picked up first for TNC. Drop and now we know Drop we are going to have some fun today. Yep. Today. 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 Okay. Um, I believe that the answer should be Fredrin here for Blacklist. They really like that hero. Uh, maybe not the famous to go with it. Maybe uh, C value yeah, Fredrin and CC, I think. Ooh, uh, yeah, okay. CC's, uh, CC's banned out. Oh, CC's banned. Oh, okay. CC's banned. Oh, they picked up Benedetta. The right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Finally, some... says Agent Zero. Okay. Oh, I can finally use it? Really? Oh, finally. This is the game to this pull it out, life? though, right? Like, this is the one. And they go they go for it, so they lock that in. I'm wondering, you can, guys, think about all the crazy hey, combinations yeah. of Lo Yi we've seen. Like, oh, not just here, no. but even in other regions. Oh, yeah. Now that, that are utilizing this Lo Yi pick. <laughs> And some of the, the great uses of, obviously, the diversions, the great use of some of the other heroes like we've seen even before. You know, of course, like the Claude yep. still being available. So, let's see. Oh. Pirates the answer? and the Paquito. Okay. Paquito, the counter for Benedetta. And the Pirates, obviously, the uh, jungler here. Well, Blacklist, um, now is the right time to pick up the Florin, I believe. Is it? Well, not literally this slot, but I think this, this game. game. This game. Yeah. Right. Because um. Why do you feel that way, Wolf? So that you will be able to support. Global presence. Although he should be countered by a global healing, I would say. Global versus global. Is that like in general? Not really. But knowing Blacklist, maybe that's the way to go. Huh. On Novaria pickup. Well, that's a classic Yue hero, so I would say that's pretty good. I like, the, I like that pickup. Yeah. Um, the Grok obviously is a good ban here. Maybe a Ruby gonna be banned by Blacklist eventually. Uh, Super Yoshi likes that. And then Ruby plus R, uh, Ruby, Ruby plus Louis, it's gonna be good. Masha is a hero that uh, is also being considered here that could be good for Super Yoshi. Not sure if uh, Blacklist will allow that Louis Masha. To, to to be picked up. That's explosive, right? Like that's like literally sending a bomb. Exactly. Intercontinental ballistic mash. Yes. <laughs> exactly. It's an ICBM. Exactly. Oh my goodness. And then you don't want that, especially when that happens. 
one of the most vulnerable parts of this Blacklist lineup is going to be Oheb as well. Yep. So yeah, you're right. This is that's scary. It makes me think that Blacklist might just last pick the last pick the uh, um, Oheb hero, mm -hmm. and maybe ban that Masha just so that they will have less problems. Ban Masha or Ruby up against uh, Super Yoshi. I almost feel like it's better to just go ahead and maybe do the Ruby. I don't know, Masha Masha can be pretty scary, but uh, maybe we'll go with Ruby this time. You like that Ruby game? Yeah. In the previous, game, in the previous gun? Yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting one. Oh, they go to Masha though, so nah, less problems, man. That's There's the good. call. Less stress in life. Less stress in life, <laughs> like we talked about earlier. Why would you? Why would you like leave a stressor out there? Yeah. Like if you have the capability to or remove a stressor from your oh. life. Just no. pull the trigger, right? This is a stressor wow. in the previous game for TNC. The 30 games played from Oheb on this Harith, 23-7. and seven. Man. That's pretty good. Oh, pretty good. It's uh, above, it's, uh, I believe, 70. Someone say that's pro level. Yeah, it's pro okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably, right? 27 <laughs> bit. Come on. Yeah. 27 You know what else is at pro level? What? Right. My Gordwin rate, of course. What what is your Gordwin rate? Nice. Seventy two percent with wow. a thousand with a <laughs> thousand games. Thousand three hundred. Oh, sorry, a thousand thirty four games. Man, okay. Thank you for That's, making me look at my win rate. Again. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get through it. The Ruby's banned out on the other side, so now first pick for the second phase mm -hmm. is gonna come up from Black to National. What are we yeah. feeling here? Mm. Hajiro Kaja looks good. Kaja, and then they can close it up with the Harith, and TNC will face so many problems when that happens. And there's also that Florida that we're talking about. <laughs> I've been waiting. So, Carrie, so Kaja still is a uh, potential here for Blacklist, unless TNC picks that up for themselves. Ooh, that's also pretty good. That's almost yeah. gonna secure a kill. Yep. Whoever gets uh, Kaja Roger. I mean, yeah, Kaja Roger looks good for TNC. The benefit of having the Roger is you have confirmed kills because uh, if their enemy it has basically so the Roger has passive me. Blade of Despair, right? Yes, right? So or activatable actually Blade of Despair. It's not an actual yeah. passive. Do you get my meaning? Yes, I understand. Yes. <laughs> we understand. Wolf. Yeah, you know. Now, this is one of the moments where maybe Faramis Rome can make it happen for the Blacklist. Oh, there it is. But there's a Kaja. 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 Kaja Bruno. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm I sure like. you're liking the Bruno here. Yep, I like it. It's, I, I hope mean, it becomes like a nomad staple. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, strike where it's the iron is hot, right? I mean, Bruno, his Bruno game number one is pretty hot, so uh, makes a lot of sense here. The blacklist, hot, got a savage. Yeah. <laughs> Florian looks really enticing now for blacklist. <laughs> Apart from that, maybe a Cho for themselves. Mm. Cho, come on, Cho, please. Show, show us you still have it. Fading away. Selena, what? okay. I saw. I heard someone scream at the audience. Maloyski. Okay. <laughs> Do we the Maloyski? <laughs> Wait, I just, I, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, wow. Wow. No I, I do have to say that uh, big shout out to CM, the ML analyst. He said Selena. <laughs> big shout out to him in chat. He? Yep. He, really did say. Yeah. he is. The ML analyst, man. Yes. He said, Selena Haji, let's go. Show us your Selena. <laughs> because <laughs> this has happened before. The Selena Novaria. Selena right? Novaria. Increase yeah. your... There, you have uh, a lot of, um, I guess, uh, reach, maybe, because of the hitbox just increasing. And uh, um, th that stun is going to be very deadly. And at the same time, you have a lot of influence in the map, right? And then uh, Kaja hates playing against the Selena because of the traps. You know, you can run around easily. Um, yeah, so very interesting pickup. Um, like I said, it has worked before. This is a Baloyski, a boy combo back in MPL Indonesia. Ooh. Well, let's find out here if this is going to work for Blacklist International or TNC Netflix. can turn things around. Into the land of Don we go. It's come down to this one game and game number three of TNC and Blacklist International. And it's been a minute, gentlemen, that we've seen the Selena in the, the Land of Dawn here in the Philippines. So we'll see how this time around a master of Haji can pull on through with this pick. I think the last guy who used it was uh, from Onik. And that was with Eto Max as the coach. <laughs> so. Oh, you mean like in the MPL Philippines? Here, here, yeah. yeah. Last right. time we used it here. Uh, like that was week two or week Yeah, that's something? right. Yeah. Together with, uh, well, not... 
literally with the Louis, but yeah. it was also yeah. the same week. Same that week. They, yeah. they picked up the Louis. When it Louis counts. wasn't cool yet. <laughs> Did it before it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Trendsetters. Well, with that, uh, you know, given this, given the how this is go going and Nomad as well, you do still have to consider the fact that there is a Kaja. There's a great pickoff potential from TNC. Yeah. There also is, again, with Selena. This is, like I said, it's a, it's a hero that the potential is there, and you constantly have to worry about dodging those abyssal yeah. arrows. So. It's something that can work for Blacklist International, and it's really something. It's almost a mini game for TNC to deal with. Exactly. You know, and not Super only Yoshi. that, they have to dodge the Star Shatter too. Yeah. So it's like a. My yeah. guy, you are you are in your own game within a game. <laughs> yeah. And with all of that, imagine the amount of time you can buy for the carry. The amount of time you can buy for maybe Edward to make something happen across the map. Yeah. Oh. It's good points here. Again, waiting for that first turtle to come up. Both teams are going to be working to get those level fours available here. And similarly, like we saw earlier, I'm wondering if Super Yoshi is going to be able to get that level four, get that divine judgment. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Ooh. Has to flicker as yeah. well. So he's That's he's huge. dealing with it. Yeah. We, we, got, it. we got the blue. We got the move, though. We got the move oh coming in. And the God. duality <laughs> actually brung, which means the damage was through the roof. Oh, my God. Oh, I call that a diversion. Good Whoa, job, okay. Super Yoshi. Okay. That was explosive. I, I did not expect that at all. I mean, clearly, Blacklist International also did not expect that. And the fact that they took away both positions four and five so easily, yeah, it's like a massive bonus now. They don't have to worry about retribution. Well, smartly though, TNC will not invade. And now, Setsui, that was the right thing to do. We highlighted this last week where we were surprised by how much damage Super Friends was doing on yeah. the Lui. on the Lui. Then people forgot. You know what? The Louis passive. It's insane when people when two targets are yeah. together and they have a different charge. Yeah. One v one, it's so bad. Yeah. yeah. But if there are two people, it's like a or at least two people more and even more. It uh, really amps it up. So it's a weird it's a weird uh, hero to have like Louis. Going up against one player is super weak. Yep. But when there are two play two opponents, it becomes very strong. When they're yeah, when they're especially bunched up, right? Yeah, the exactly. way that it works, and that's where she really gets to shine. I mean, even with the lethal ignition, having that emblem set, the, the damage, the poke potential is great. And Super Yoshi, now that he has the divine judgment available, he's just kind of gonna most likely wait the next 23 yeah. seconds for that flicker to be available, and then they always have. This kind of on command pickoff potential that they can throw at Blacklist yeah. International. And you have to consider the fact, too, that if they get that automatic minus one, let's say they really get that Divine Judgment off, they get a kill for TNC, numbers advantage wise, it's going to help them because at the same time, yeah. you can use the diversion with that. We saw this, I think it was just yesterday, yeah. where that play was made with the diversion oh, into the that. conceal with the Kaja. Yeah. And there are traps all over the place. Like I said, uh, it's difficult to play the Kaja when there's a Selena. And you also... That's probably the reason why Blacklist International allowed the Liu Yi to be picked <coughs> up because they know that they can be prepared. Because you can uh, put the Selena traps on typical Liu Yi teleport or portal places, diversion yep. places, and then have extra information for your team. Wow. Oh. There oh, it is. there you go. Finally, a successful activation of the Kaja. Divine Judgment. Ooh, Obviously, so Suido quite tanky as a veteran. But imagine that's going to be the frontliner for Blacklist down in very low HP. So that they might not be able to respond no, to this turn right now. <clears throat> they will be giving it up. Is that a version play? Where is it? Where is it? On the side. Okay. There you go. Oheb. Oh, He's the target. Man. Does he know this though? Oh, Does he, he know this? Oh, he does. He dodged. He dodged oh, one spell. That's he got enough. The flicker though. He, yeah. I think he missed out on the timing where he, you know, divine judge is on cooldown. I think yeah. he missed out on the comms there. Hmm. So that's huge for TNC. Huge win up on top. That means they will have to give away that turret. Man, I, I really like what Sensu is doing right now. He's taking away important jungle creeps away from uh, Ryzen. So despite Blacklist International struggling, I think that they'll have a good shot on the next Lord just because of the EXP gap. And Sensui is not uh, trailing behind when it comes to the farm. So it's really good stuff that you're seeing from uh, uh, from Sensui and his I instincts. Think, I, think, yeah, I think again, you're just kind of 
when you're when it's this situation, you're like, I just got to get what I can. Yeah. yeah. And if that's you know parts of the enemy jungle of TNC, then Ooh, that Blacklist combo. can work with that. that combo. <laughs> and if they can't, it's really like, well, we just wait to meet TNC in these objectives because right now, like you guys mentioned. They've kind of just had to give up these two turtles. Right now, TNC setting that pace. Yeah. But we'll see if they're punished as the farming continues up here for Blacklist International. Yeah. If you're really looking for that silver lining for Blacklist, it's okay. Well, they haven't had too many deaths. Oh, they they only have a 2K gold lead to work against. But TNC, on the other hand, they've got a great set of potential, great diversions that can be set up here. Again, great with that, and like we said earlier, no bet on this Bruno, where you got a savage in game one, could help them out here. Heads going to spawn out Edward, trying to set up on the backside. And they set okay. things up. Diversion again. Another diversion. So right. like two people being set out. And you know what? The advantage that you also have of this arena is. These traps are just so good. You can check so many bushes oh, no and man. maybe be safer. No man, 1v1 with Sensui. Yeah. That's a noob. How did that start? Big oof. The purified not gonna work That's versus a, a bird <laughs> that has a lot a of stunts to have. And then it happened because Sensui is farming constantly. He didn't stop farming. Go for Haji. Super Yoshi oh, used the flicker and the combo oh, no. with the Divine Judgment, but no follow-up. That is a huge Dante. ultimate being used up, and there is a turtle on the map. Oh man, TNC making the bad place now. Uh oh. Okay, a lot of vision being given off by the Astral Echo. Ryzen taken out, and there you go. It's suddenly yeah, a 4v5 for yeah, I'm surprised TNC just didn't give this turtle up. As soon as Nomad went down, I don't know. They should probably just been like, what? And especially when the Divine Judgment didn't work out for them. It should have been. Oh, no. Let's call it back. Yep. Fortunately for TNC, it was uh, Super Yoshi to take that orange buff. But now, I do agree with you. Especially because we don't have the Kaja ultimate up. That's... Um, it, it, you consider yourself dead if you're Super Yoshi. If you don't have the, time, if the Divine Judgment, right? Yep. So it's practically a 5v3 at that moment. 3.5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And... Um, I now see the combo for Blacklist. Edward with a Petrify. That confirms one stun, so you can follow up with another stun from Haji and then the damage from Yue. And they can do it from very far away. Exactly. So that's a, that's a scary stuff uh, for sure for TNC. And right now, TNC, that lead they had, that little bit of lead like we were talking about, completely diminished at this point just from that whole interaction yeah. for that third turtle of the game for Black yeah. International over the secure it. So now yeah. this sets themselves up. You already mentioned this earlier, Wolf. Their fighting potential, the team fight potential that Blacklist International has is actually pretty good. Yep. And also Edward picking up the Malefic Roar here. Nomad really needs to be careful with his positioning. Yes. He isn't exactly uh, where he needs to be just yet. Yeah, he's got that Purify, but like you mentioned, that only helps so much yeah. dealing with the lineup that Blacklist has here. So in 30 seconds or so, we're going to find that Lord come up and both teams trying to get that space they can work with, get some of these tier ones down, some of these other turrets. And as they even out, oh, there's another diversion oh, play, <laughs> but not going to be able to find yeah. anything. I also have the echo still in, yeah. in there, so they, they, they were caught. Oh, that's Hatred going to be hit by... Uh, Bissell arrow. arrow up at this point, and Blacklist uh, quietly taking over the game. Yep, slowly but surely, for sure, especially with Agent Zero just starting to get warmed up. Although he is against heads, I really like the Paquito pickup here. Kind yeah. of make sure that you can have a chance to chase Agent Zero, but again, we are yet to see what he can actually do here. Oh, oh. man, nice guess here from you with. Gets up two members of TNC, and now it's going to be Blacklist who will seem to want to get something done here on the mid. Oh, that's such a good interaction, too. Land the arrow, land the shot, you know, land that scatter shot as well. Work around that. And uh, so now, or Star Shatter, sorry. Astral is, Echo. Yep. The Echo, Echo is going to come down. So now Lord's up here. Half health. But you can see, even with this, they still have to be cautioned how Hatred they is. walk up Ooh. to this. Hatred no. is oh, shit. Oh, oh, what? No. How does what? he know? Whoa, no way. That's how you stop that's, that setup. That's how you stop that setup. Man, oh man. And that was not a joke. That was a, actually max damage, I think. Yeah. On max. the Astral Echo. Oh, oh, oh. Again. Recall, and there you go. That's going to be 2v2, 2v4 right there. That might be a sacrifice. The team fight looks oh, really bad it's... for Blacklist. The free members for the back can't join the two on the front. 
Wow! Isolated! Good isolation coming out from uh, TNT and Ryzen just tanky enough to kind of hold his ground. Receive some, uh, soak some oh. of the damage from Blacklist International. And then uh, equalize it with that beautiful Daytona's welcome. Mm. Man, neither team able oh to God. Oh God. Lord just yet. Full info. Out. Diversion coming in to support this play here. Complete five band squad again for TNC and now it's still 3v5. Here for oh, Blacklist. Oh, for some reason trying to see if he can get some fight done with Nomad, but it is a no-go. It's TNC yeah. coming out with the Lord. Oh, now there's more damage coming in. Ryzen absorbing all of that on, for some on. reason. He's tanky enough though. Yeah, going for the, the Sky Helmet. Good decision. And then the Kiras. There, back in Season 6, I remember Barrett as one of those heroes that counters the Selena just because of the... Uh, because back then, resilience wasn't that big of a thing. Yeah. And Barrett is one of those heroes with natural resilience. And resilience is basically reducing the amount of time controlled. Tough boots. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. And so that's why Ryzen can afford it to get that. And the Sky Guardian helmet uh, helps a lot. We'll see how they play around this again. A lot of shots here. Landing about 26%. Uh, like it, it don't, don't, you know, it looks kind of bad, but no, they need to use it to check bushes. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, it's going to be Super Yoshi caught up here. Energy eruption forces them to fuse a flicker there. And he could have been very bad, but at least they're alive. Better not land on a trap there, Super Yoshi. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to be fine. Blacklist International makes quick work of the Lord. They hold on to as much as they can here. Yep. TNC, though, finding themselves again in a small lead that they lost earlier. So it's a pendulum right now between both teams here. Yep. Blacklist, though. Woo, damage difference. Okay. Interestingly, Yoshi dealt more damage. Well, it's a, it's a roaming Selena, by the way, so that's uh, all right. But then the Novaria, look at that. That's the thing with the Novaria. No matter what happens, you have an impact. Yep. No matter what happens, you're able to siege. Yeah. from a distance, and that really does help. Hatred, though, picking up the Divine Glaive, especially now with this part of the game where you're going to have Blacklist International kind of bunching up a little bit in some situations. That's where the Lu Yi can really shine when you have these damage items available. Yeah. So other parts, gold lane pretty, looking pretty even as well here. And I would say that despite TNT, is, despite TNT leading by 2k, yeah. This is probably doesn't matter at all at this game. Like probably leads don't matter as much. I think that it will boil down to actual <laughs> gameplay. Like uh, how Blacklist International are trying to hit their shots with both you and Haji. And then conversely, it's the uh, ultimate from Hatred that if they find a big opening, yeah. which they are trying to do now, no, it's just for scouting at this point. Yeah, that's just about what, 22 seconds at max level. So. Uh, yeah. Very short cooldown. Yeah. Short cooldown. This Luyi, uh, sorry, Zumaria Selena line duo is like a, a literal embodiment of shoot your shot. You yes. Know? You might not always find the target, yes. but as long as you do, you shoot your shot, you could provide vision, you're providing info. Yep. Maybe for next time, you'll do better. Yeah, I mean, think how much oh, coverage you actually have with with both those heroes. You know, working together, being Push able check. to get, yeah, getting yeah. information. I know. As if the Echo isn't enough you know, to, get that, <laughs> yeah. to get that information that you need here. Astral Echo is like the big, <laughs> the big guns, you know. Yeah, so with that, Black International <laughs> has quite a bit of vision available to them. And w they don't want to actually commit to this lore just yet because even so, TNC has good damage potential. Now, my my big part here for Blacklist. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Seriously, look seriously, at that! Man. So much, so much no, area of effect damage. It's so hard to get oh. near these Blacklist oh. members. I, oh my god! I can't, I can't stress talk, that enough. Oh talk about zone. God. Like this is zone pressure. Exactly. That you're just dealing with. So much artillery you have to deal with. Oh man. I think unless this oh. can be stopped here, this looks like Blacklist might be able to just take this, but Ryzen Nomad gets the information. There's heads and hatred as well on the top side. It's gonna go through a soft reset. Conceal. Play. Yoshi though. Oh Yoshi! Nice catch up on Edward here. We'll be able to walk out, Hi. but Goes back in with the Electro Final Blow. That's going to be one kill coming over and make that two. Nomad's out as well. Man, Oheb's looking really fire right now. And again, because all of the attention is on the other members, Oheb can just do whatever he wants. And I think that's ba definitely a bad decision from TNC to go for Edward. I'm sure that Edward is the only one that they can reach with, it, with a Divine Judgment, but 
that doesn't mean that he is the right target to go to because of the fact that he can just uh, eye for an eye uh, out of there. Right? They don't have the damage as well. So that's a really bad decision. Look Whoa. at that shot. Oh my goodness, another one going down there. And that's going to be an instant assassination on Bro, the Hatred. I said, not going to be able to sustain against a carry. Man. That shredding damage coming in from Oheb is unbelievable. Hachi oh, going into this bush. That's where you're starting to see it again. This, you know, you guys got to think about this. If, if you've never played against this before, the amount of mental clarity you need to deal with yeah. dodging all of these shots exactly. being thrown at you from Blacklist International. Oh my god. Look at that. It was moving. That was a moving target, but Head still got hit with the arrow. Yeah. And now it's going to be the push up on the mid and on the bottom as well. Edward just doing Edward things. Oh no. Agent Zero making it hard. He is a moving target wow. as well, but looks like it's going to be cleared up. Nice defense coming from TNC so far. Dodging some of these shots. Make sure that they can clear their base. Clean Siege coming up from Blacklist. They got to almost take it out the third without anyone falling. And now Blacklist International definitely in control of this game. <laughs> Both Hatred and Ryzen picking up those Winter Tranchets to be available here. The real-time win rate flip-flopping. Now big, big favor for Blacklist International. We take a look quickly at the items here. You mentioned earlier the leads don't matter much, but how about the items? Oh. Items matter so much because now it means that OHEP can one shot oh. people. Oh, so. Edward! Immortality. Immortality Bob, he still has some of these <coughs> skills, but not going to be able to use them at all. Okay, no. Nice uh, pick yeah, up yeah. there from TNC. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> Hatred got the orange, so it's a little bit of a oof there for TNC. Definitely want to <coughs> give it to Nomad at this point because uh, any, any additional damage source is going to be much welcome for the Bruno. Yeah. But that, uh, taking out Edward though, that's a massive play. It's a good start. TNC. Good start. I was about to ask, like, what does TNC actually need to do to, to play around it? Yeah. You know, play around these stuns and these skill shots? And you know what? That's one of them. Yeah. Try to get a pick off when it matters. Exactly. And just deal with the fact that Let's go. you kind of have to accept, like, all right, we're like, no matter I'm where I'm we are, we're going to get somehow spotted out. Like, <laughs> they're well, going to know well, where well, we well, are. Well, so. Well, so this how can we real. utilize? Yeah. How can we utilize the low E pick? I think that's really where they have to go, and that's working against the traps like even, string, guys. for the most part. So that's a, a key factor here for TNC is how do we utilize this diversion play, especially when we're talking oh. about in the next ten so seconds when comes up. If they can somehow so find so a surprise so angle so on Black so so I think they can actually. Black. Find a way in the team fight, but right now it's yeah. dealing with this this vision control, uh, which again is super doubly hard to make a good low yi play. <laughs> I like it. Super, super doubly, super doubly hard to make a low yi play because of the traps everywhere. Exactly. So even if you do find a good plan, Blacklist will be aware of it and they can plan. But I guess you get have to get to a point where they're aware, but you, they can't do anything about it. Yeah. Um, for TNT, I think uh, the most ideal scenario for them is just like in Lord Number One, where Edward eventually runs in front of Ryzen and then they isolate it with the damage that they have, and then they keep Nomad safe. So, probably is the case here. But Ryzen, especially with the damage output that Ohip can bring to the table now, yeah. kind of feels like they don't want to, they, they, they cannot put Ryzen up there. As much as they would. And look yeah. at the traps. Oh, They're being is. prepared. Oh, oh they have been found out. See what Ule. I mean. See what so I mean. Ule. It's so Ule. difficult Ule. to make a play. And now it's oh. going to be Blacklist going non-stop into the fight here. And it's still going to be a basically one for one uh, yeah, happening right now. It's going to be Blacklist with that Lord. And now, <laughs> the jump in by uh, Oh, yeah, with a flicker forward. No man, though. He did get a death. Get a kill, but yeah, the emo, oh, the man. emo difference was real, and now Haji starting to feel it. <laughs> they know they got this, and that's a wipeout. Blacklist come yeah, out on top Haji. against TNT in that Lord fight, and they take the series two to one. The victory pose, the victory recalls. The oh, agents yeah. do it. Blacklist International taking the, the series. <laughs> And a nice showing there once again. <laughs> great gameplay, great counter to that diversion. Last picked, Selena. Uh, it please. works.
No way. <laughs> Selena no. Novara, it works. I mean, it's insane. It's insane. And the fact of the matter is, it, TNC had a great idea, but the positioning of that trap is not entire, exactly in the... It's not on the edge. It's not in the middle. It's not in the right side. It's like... It's, it's off, right? It's so that yeah. Hatred actually tried to go for that play where he's going to put the diversion in a spot where it's uh, quite different. So they weren't found out. But yeah, unfortunately for TNC, this Louis pick that they tried to do, even when they started so well, didn't end well for them. Huh. Again, great to see this pickup come through. But it's a good answer to the Louis and dealing with some of those diversion plays as we saw there and really just controlling vision in the map with the pair of that Novario with that Selena making it work here TNC they take their bow once again they aren't able to win this series like in their previous meeting with Black International in the beginning of the season where they got some of their first points of the regular season so they still have to calibrate here do they have enough time but it's Black International with this win and we're going to hear from them alongside our hosts Mara and Hot. <laughs> Once again, congratulations to Blacklist International. All right, let me hear it from you, Blacklist. Congratulations. Now, ayan, nandito rin si Rana J. Oheb, Oheb, last time that you guys played against TNC, natalo kayo. So anong feeling na bawian nyo sila this time especially? Pagkatapos ng savage nung counterpart, na savage kayo nung kalaban nyo, anong feeling ngayon? Ano, masaya kasi ngayon nakagain na kami ng momentum kasi papalapit na rin yung playoffs so kailangan talaga naming manalo, maka-score ng points. So sobrang laking tulong na nanalo kami kapon tsaka ngayon ano, para makagain kami ng momentum going forward. O oh, nga, three points <coughs> para sa panalo ngayon. At maganda yung ano lang ipinakita nun. This time, I wanna ask Haji. Uh, Haji, before we head on to this match, Pinalabas ni uh, yung pinalabas namin yung video about Coach Bonsan addressing yung shot calling issue na kinakailangan ng team to move forward. Sa so, tingin mo ba with the consecutive victories na nakuha niyo this week, nakuha niyo na yung timpla or na address niyo na yung issue regarding that? Um tingin po ano, konti pa kasi um tingin ko di pa ako perfect mag shot call eh, pero tinatry ko naman po. Basta ano po, tiwala lang po yung kampo ko. Walang hesitation po sa ano sa naisip kong play, ganun. Tiwala ang players, tiwala ang coaches, tiwala rin ang blacklist agents sa kaya mong gawin. This time around, I'm gonna be asking you one more question kasi hindi ka lang nagpakitang gilas in terms of shot calls. You've also used Selena oh, in this ma, game. Oh, Selena! Gumana! Isang hero na madalas hindi natin nakikita for this season. What was the reason behind the Selena pick? Ano po? An ano yung rason kung bakit nyo na-pick up yung Selena in this one? Uh, ano lang po, um, trip lang po ni Coach Bon. Tsaka po kanina po kasi, nung nagpa-practice po kami, parang may nakalaban po kaming gano'n na Selena. So, oh. hindi ko po siya na-practice, ano lang po, biglaan lang po na nagamit. Oh, so hindi parang, niya ba na-practice? Oo oh, po, pasok, pasok lang po sa lineup ng kalaban. Kaya, oh. So idea mo daw yun, Coach Bon? Uh, biglaan lang kasi, syempre matagal ko ng teammate si Haji eh, na alaga ko dati, magaling talaga siyang mag Selena. Then, ayun, sige ka agad, sige na main. Ayun, 5K matches. Kaya, ayun, na, ano, na nakapag-sige na kami ng biglaan, although hindi na-practice. Good risk naman siya, dahil alam naman nung gagamit na alam niyang gamitin. Wow, hindi nakapag-practice, pero that's one of the reasons kung bakit na-surprise yung kalaban. At sila ngayon ang nagogi. And ang ating MVP of Game 3, Oheb! Oheb, once again, Congratulations! Ikaw ang MVP. Ano naman mensahe mo sa lahat ng ating mga manonood? Ano, maraming maraming salamat sa mga sumusuporta sa amin kahit ano, puro talo kami ng mga nakaraan. Ano, mas gagalingan namin tsaka mas ayusin namin mga laro namin sa mga susunod namin na laban. Congratulations! It's time para magbuko juice ka na mamaya. <laughs> Once again, congratulations to Blacklist. You may now take <laughs> your bow. <laughs> And Dex, you'll hear this once again. You may now take your walk of victory. Narin Nicolet, ni Dex Star at ng Blacklist International ang word na victory for today. You know, Mara, yun na in interview one, you know, we were talking to Haji a while ago. The other players were saying na magic bunot 
yung Serena. And it seemed like it worked pretty fine dahil nakuha nila ang series victory. Nakaka-surprise nga, pero nasupresa din ba ang ating mga casters? We're gonna break down the analysis for you. Casters, Paso! Paso. Thank you again. Great to hear from Wax International. And kind of what fell into place here for them for this matchup. You mentioned this earlier too, Wolf, before you break down the game. You saw yeah. this picked up, right? Yeah. You saw the Selena pick up here and that maybe that's some of the inspiration. Taking yeah. a look at the MVP here as well. It's Ohep. 5 0 oh, and 3. Knowing full well how to manage this Barrett, Blackness International have drafted a carry. And in the last Lord Takes, you've seen how good it is. The efficacy of the carry going up against the Barretts is really felt in that particular game. Especially because there wasn't anyone to kind of force and go to the back lines against Ohev. They tried to go for this Louis play, but they were uh, practically countered by this Selena pickup. Let's look at it once again. But my, oh my, when TNT was working, it looked real good. Oh. Look at that uh, Lui play. But then, the start of the the, prob the pr problems are beginning for TNC. This is the looks good. Watch out for what Heads was able to do. And then the suppression onto Edward. Ryzen still can tank the damage of, of Oheb at this point. And Heads, good pokes from him. Unfortunately, this was the start of the, prob start of the issues now for TNC. Because they went in for Edward first. And we know that... That is not the best idea in this particular case. And then Haji, how about that? Hits it because of the echo. By the way, he's technically not gonna get hit by the uh, by the arrow, but because of the astral echo, that's additional hitbox. And then the play, as you saw coming out from Haji himself, it's looking really good for the side of TNC to, to make this happen. But then again, Blackness International are far too prepared for this. The Nomad tried to go for the OHIP kill, completes it, but that, there's immortality, so there wasn't, there wasn't any chance. But honestly, at that point, there's no chance at all for TNC to bring it back, just because of how Blacklist International have prepared for this Louis pick. In the end, it was just this Selena. And the thing with Selena is that as a roamer, you have so much impact that all you need is a, a frontliner for your team which in this case is going to be Sensui, who also played so well in this game. And then, um, as Haji um, shown us, you can deal, output so much damage even when you're from a roaming position. As you can see, going in for the dire hit into the Enchanted Talisman, so you can spam your traps as well as your arrows, as they did in this particular game. And then finish up with the Genius 1. And Genius 1 alone also already deals so much damage. And in the latter portions, because of the dire hit at the Star Leap site, Anybody from TNT can fall easily. Rides in. Good itemization as well. Going for the Kiras into the Sky Garden helmet. Unfortunately, at the end of the uh, end of the day, it will be Oheb to output the most damage in this game with a carry taking out the bats. Um, Yue still is the carry. 57.9k damage. And Rise in just attacking 152,000 damage in this particular game. Understandably so, as the Kinisag natin. Dito na dali yun eh. So, even if you do find a good flank, Blacklist will be aware of it yeah. and make it flank. But I guess you get, have to get to a point where they, so, they, should, they have it. In, especially with the damage output that Ohit can bring. They, they, they cannot put Ryzen okay, up well. there as much as they would. And look at the traps. Oh, They're being prepared. Oh, oh they have found out. Trap. As much as they Ooh, don't want to. They, they, they cannot put Ryzen up there as much as they would. And look yeah. at the traps. Oh, They're being prepared. Oh, oh they have been found out. See what I mean. See what so I mean. Difficult. It's so difficult to make a play. And now it's oh. going to be Blacklist going non-stop into the fight here. And it's still going to be a basically one for one. In this game, they couldn't find the correct targets. And that's the thing for the Kaja, right? Despite it being a very strong lockdown and very impactful, big game changer for sure. You really have to choose your targets. And I would say that the worst target to go for in this particular game is definitely Edward, because he can turn it around, right? Imagine if he caught like maybe Haji. Haji is a, a roamer, so that's a position five, least priority, right? But Haji cannot turn around the team fights afterwards. It's not like Edward that can, you know, uh, even make it worse for your team.
Thanks for the breakdown there, Wolf. Again, great series to see it go, the three games. Now we're down to our last matchup of the day to round out week number five. It's going to be AP Bren and Manana Evos. Interesting this one as well. We know uh, AP Bren obviously is sitting very wealthy up top. Yep. Uh, obviously still vying for that upper bracket slot like a lot of the teams that have already secured their slots here. And Manana Evos obviously wanting to stay in contention and everything else going forward. So we'll see how that all unfolds. We're going to be taking a short break once again for us here on the desk. It's going right, to be Rock Hart and Wolf. Next week, we'll be back after this. Next week, ah, next week, my... In season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner don't miss any MPLPH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, hey guys, MPL bye -bye. Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. Okay, na mga video guys, may upload ako Okay, mga in-upload ko. Bye-bye.